This is the Levels Network. I am Justin Hoddle, joined by the Triple OG, Widow Mason, and OG. It is time to review round four, brother. Yeah. But first of all, Easter long weekend. How was your long weekend, mate? Cruisy, man. A lot of sport. Um, that was it. Football, boxing, UFC. It was all happening. Oh, yeah, the UFC. And a lot of chocolates. That's yeah, why I, got, I had to get after it this morning at well, E-Lab. Yeah. <laughs> Far out, man. I feel like a pig. You got the anyway, 545 says, yeah, I feel way better. Yeah. I had a couple of runs as well straight after. One before on Sunday morning mm. and another one on Monday morning just to get – because did the Easter egg hunt. Lenny's only like 15, 16 months old. We had like 70-plus eggs. She's only have one of them. That's it. I'm like, she's looking around now. She can see all like the wrappers all uh, – we've got the big Easter yeah, egg. Yeah, wait till and, next year. And she starts like pointing up in it. More? More? Um, so, yeah, I had to do a couple of runs myself, mate. But uh, mm. the boxing, let's – we will – Tim Zoo, what, what an animal. Beast, man. What an animal. Shout out Tim Zoo, man. Nothing but respect. Uh, what happened in the second round with the elbow to the head and then just cop that the whole time. Yeah, round Couldn't three. Couldn't even see. Round three, round three, Luca, three Luca, yeah. yeah. Um, and then like he said that he couldn't see for nearly the whole fight and he had to go against a big six foot six, like big prey mantis looking bloke who just was not stopped jabbing that same spot. Yeah. It was awful. Well, that's what you do if you're in that position. Oh, well, of course right? you would. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they reckon, I think uh, Billy Dib said something good, something quite important. He said they should have stopped it. Yeah, they can. I didn't find that should out until the next it. day. He said um, something really interesting. I, you know, it's not going Billy Dib. Shout out to Billy Dib too. Good man. Yeah. Um, yeah, he said something. I was just like, yeah, yeah, maybe they should have stopped it. The if, amount of blood that he lost. Yeah, so if it happens from an elbow or an innocuous knock from an elbow or headbutt or something like that, mm. the corner can stop it as a no contest. He just got and balls, Tim Zoo, man. We can't hear you. Yeah, I know. I know, Lukey. Yeah, Lukey's popping up, but we can't hear him as well. Yeah. So up until round four, if that happens, okay, and you can stop it. But I'd imagine like the uh, Tim Zoo, like people. Were, uh, a guy who was telling me the next day was blowing up about his corner not doing it. But I, I just I don't think Tim Zoo's going. Yeah, let's let's I, call this quits. I just think Timmy's got that dog in him. Yeah. Like you know, he would have. Uh, even though it was splurting out, he still would have just backed himself to get right, All the done. things that he's saying, he's, he's a warrior, he's yeah. from that different cloth, yeah, he's he, cut from that other shit, and he, he is, is, man. He proved everyone's point. He'll be back, he'll get all those belts, man. I don't think anyone wants to fuck with him now. That was a bloody, that was a... It's gonna, he's going to have to rebuild it for a couple of fights, though, you reckon? Yeah, he just yeah. go back. I yeah, think because back just and, because of that, like the Americans love that shit. You know what I mean? He needs to crack that market, and they want to, he has to, they have to go, I want to watch Tim Zoo fight. Yeah. And I think they want to watch him now. Yeah, true. It was. It was. He's got to crack that market, man. It was so entertaining, in saying that you know what boxing's like. It's very like stats and, yeah. and records, re, you know, dependent. And then it's the money that. that and those I'm pretty sure, get behind like the amount, amount of money that he gets over here, like the pay per views and all that sort of shit. Everyone's watching Tim Zoo because we love him, right? Mm. And then over there, you put it on a show like that, you could easily quit. You watch all the me- uh, the, twi- the Twitter messages or X, whatever yep. it is. Oh, nothing but positivity, right? I'm they'll, not give on him X, a, they'll, so go, they'll give him another crack yep. simply because they want to watch him play and he's about it. Is that your feeling? Yeah, on, he's about it, man. Like Errol Spence, Twitter. all these guys. I okay, want to fight. Awesome. If, they, if, they, if he fights Errol Spence or some shit like that, obviously you can't go straight to the top yep. with those guys. But Errol Spence is coming off a beatdown from Bud Crawford, Terrence mm. Bud Crawford. So who knows what can happen in that division as well. Yeah, all man. the best, Timmy. Uh, yeah, you did you're a legend, Timmy. You're an absolute dog. And yeah, very close to. To dog of the week, oh, even mate, with an L. We've pretty, never given a, a, yeah, a play was, with yeah. an L or a, a play with an, an L or a dog of the week, but you're very <laughs> close to it. Um, all right, mate. So uh, what what I've done this year is I've teamed up with the RLPA. There's a couple other people. Mm. I'm not too sure. I won't name who else is on the uh, panel, but basically we're putting together our three two ones for mm. the start of the season, and then we send it to the players, and they they are they are they they vote on. Uh, they vote on their player of the month yep. based off sort of what we, we give them the feedback. Because if, yeah. you, if you give them a wide range, uh, the thought process behind it is that it can get a bit willy-nilly, mm-hmm. maybe, uh, you know, mutters, mutters Did Hutchinson. Did you care about it when you were playing? The RLPA Awards. Who's your 3-2-1? No, it was, see, I think it was too wide because then I'd be voting for teammates and shit like that. Yeah, Whereas just, if you've got, just say, the way they're doing it now with five or six candidates – it sort of narrows it down. It's not a pain in the ass. Yeah. You know, if you you know, if you look at a big list with everyone's yeah. names there. But how they were doing it. Remember two in the two thousand and tens, you know what I mean? Remember I can't like, even remember doing Yeah, it. I do. Maybe, and maybe. I was like, no one give the fuck. Yeah. Right? Because of the fact was it was too broad and you just you, you can't do it week after week and you no one really cares that much. If you get beat, you're not you're you're voting for you, you really don't care. And mm. I think guys like Clint Newton, they, I was playing with Newton when they were doing all this shit. And all the guys that they got on their directors and boards and that, they understand where the players go through now. 
Yep. So they're putting it like every month. As so, easy as yeah. simple as possible. Yes. Yep. And you really and you get the actual best player because when you are playing and you're losing wins and losses, that'll depend on like who you vote for. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You yeah. might have an, a you little bit, of, most a of, bit time, of an agenda against the team that's care. bigger. You do not care. And it's just yeah. say your team carved the hell out of you and you don't like that guy, you're not giving him three. Mm. You're giving the other guys, you give someone else that. And it's not a genuine pick. Yeah. And, and that's why these guys are killing it now. All right. Your genuine picks then for All your right. start of the season. Would you like to hear mine? No, you no, go no, first. Okay. Okay. I think one is Paddy Carrigan. I think up with the Broncos, they've yep. been going really well and he's been the mainstay there. Payne has been out for a couple of weeks. He has to carry a lot of that Good burden. Point. He um he's the sole reason. I mean, I was up there on the Friday. He's he's spirit and how they follow him. He's a, he's he's that dude, right? They he's love one him. of those guys you'd love to watch at the field. Yeah, he's Did good, mate. He gets like through a lot of work, a lot of minutes, a lot of kick pressure, all these little things that a lot of middles like myself notice. He does it all and he does it really well. Um for two, I think RTS. I think RTS has come out just because he's been He's in, he's in the Warriors. Warriors are pretty good, right? Yep. I think they, they slipped up a couple of times, but I think they're going to be a top four team. Yep. You know? So he got your three points on the weekend? Two? Yeah, he got my three points. And he would have got a, a couple points. Yeah, he got two and then one, I think he's somewhere. Ones. So yep. he's uh, – but just his presence there and the fact that he hasn't played for two years and he's come back and he's killed it. And I think the, the one is Dylan Edwards. Yeah. It's hard to go past him. Teddy had to kill it on the weekend. So he's your three-pointer. Yeah, he's my so, three-pointer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But if Teddy had a – Teddy had a killed on the on the weekend. He probably would have been three or two. Yeah, Dylan Edwards, he's that dude, man. Yeah, that try that he scored on the weekend. Don't think that was a fluke. The way he angled that ball in, the little it was like a, it was like an AFL move. How they do a little pirouette and they just kick one through. So nice, man. It was beautiful, wasn't it? It's sort of you got to respect shit like that because that's under massive fatigue. You don't know what the fuck is going on. Teddy's trying to get you. You step around Teddy, put that little angle, that kick in perfectly. Mm. And then dive on it, like man, respect that sort of stuff. You it's know high the beauty talent. of that try as well. Like I had it in my notes as well. There are seven Roosters jerseys around. Yeah, one Penrith jersey. Managed to score, and he gets to the ball first. How? that sums up Penrith. But That's that angle of the kick it was like perfect. It's yeah. not like he fluked it. He didn't. He wanted to do that. Yeah, he of knew what he wanted yeah, to do. Like yeah. The, the, yeah, that's the it. Best so, base tries, second best repeat set. Yep. Nice. Um, all right, mate. My three, two, one to start the season. Um, I've gone Nico Hines. He was my three. Uh, he almost got negative two points for that Tigers game. But mm. uh, I, judging the, the form line for that Tigers game doesn't look as bad anymore after the Tigers went and beat Parramatta at Combank. So um, I just thought he's been he, – he got two points for me in the in the win against the Warriors. Siffa was – which was uh, was three in that game, and then basically I, I've given him three points for both for of the us, wins against against the dogs. Against the he dogs, carved, yeah. uh, just on ball. The, be- the the thing I love about Nico is he leaves no doubt as to the result or who is uh, the reason be like behind the result. Like yeah. he wants the ball. He's he wants it. He wants it when it matters. Uh, he's always on ball or he's always – he organises Trindle to be out the back when he wants it as he's well. He's brought Trindle on too. Trindle's that Trindle's dude. looking good. Yeah. yeah, yeah he's, my, my forgot two, about Nico. Sorry. My two was uh, Tommy Dearden. Tommy Dearden's been outstanding. Even in the loss against the Broncos, yeah. um, they did him dirty by uh, not fighting back in that game. And the game against the Knights, he was outstanding. The game against the Dragons, he was good. Probably not their best, um, and it was a bit of a sloppy game from everyone. Yeah. But at the start of the year, I thought he was good to to open against the Dolphins as well. And my one was Teddy. I went Teddy. Damn. Teddy. Um, Dylan Edwards. Dylan Edwards has been good. Uh, I just thought he was next next best for me. I had I had Dylan Edwards, Hammer, and Appy very close. They were thereabouts for me. So those were my it's pretty um, close at the moment. There's about eight. Is it eight to ten in my head that I'm like. They're pretty much on par. Yeah. So Sorry, you're, splitting, and, you're splitting hairs. And Pappy. So the thing that hurt Hammer, Appy and uh, and Pap and Pappy, Appy and Pappy, <laughs> was that they only played three games. Yeah. Three games yeah. out of the four. So they'll get an opportunity. So those are my three to begin with. Um, and I will say that uh, the other judges weren't the same as mine. So I think there'll be a good group of maybe five to six to seven players that the players will be able to vote on. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let us know. Let us know who your three, two, one is in the comments um, for the month of March. Um, also, Mace, want to pump up this golf day that we've got coming up as well, mate. We're going to be heading up to the Hunter Valley uh, for the Red Nose Golf Charity Day. It is on April 26th 
uh, Friday, April 26th, the day before Lukey uh, takes on um, his boxing. What we what would we call it? What would uh, he's already had a couple of fights at this point of his podcast life. against the the podcast Paw Patrol, Royale, the Paw, <laughs> the Paw Patrol. Um, so we're looking forward to that in the next day up at Gold Coast. But if you want to get involved in the Golf Day, message the Facebook page uh, at Page Harris Electrical or you can message Cooper Harris directly on 0439 270 uh, There are a couple of teams left. Me and Mace will be there on the day yep. playing whilst also getting involved in the auction after as well. Um, let's get into a little recap, mate. Uh, again, not my best result. Uh, but a few more highlighted names there. A couple, oh, yes, that's all right. A couple of more try scorers. I got uh, three bets at the line and three anytime try scorers. A couple of them very late as well. Um, didn't start well, mate. Roosters minus five and a half. Joey Manu disallowed. Graham Mannersley come out and has said uh, that that was a try. So what a joke. That hurts, but. It did. It doesn't. It doesn't go into the bank account, mate. So oh, mate! Count. But just that fucking rule, right? Get yep. that shit right. I'd be. I'd be. Furi- oh. I'd be furious if I wasn't just. You know, I, I've got ten bucks each on these. Yeah, and, I don't care. Just um, like, it's, it's the refs, mate. We'll get to that shit. Okay. It's ridiculous. We'll get to that because I got. I got some uh, questions around the obstruction. Yeah. Room. Wow. Uh, Souths minus six and a half. The late try against the for the Bulldogs. Uh, rule on that one. Latrell. Never really looked likely. Uh, Cowboys minus one and a half. Nanai three twenty five. That was probably my worst. The Cowboys were awful Terrible. against the Broncos. Uh, this is another bad one. Manly minus seven and a half. Oh, I don't think the bet was all that bad. Just Manly were awful. Yeah. But I got Olakuatu late. Uh, Dolphins minus two and a half. Tick. Tabuai Fido. Tick. Warriors minus seven and a half. Just a tick. One by got that by half a point. Rocco Berry another disallowed try. Uh, but that one was pretty much more – that was pretty straightforward, that one. Uh, Raiders plus four and a half. After 20 minutes, I had a 22 and a half point lead and I still got dusted somehow. How did that happen? Oh. How did that happen? Sticky oh, was Ricky. furious after, after the game. Uh, Matty Timical, uh, he was quiet in this game. Three, uh, $3.50, yeah. it was no good. Uh, but I finished strong with the Tigers plus six and a half and Jareem Buller uh, scored a try off one oh, of I the uh, better efforts. So – uh, I've outlaid six hundred and forty bucks to begin the season. Uh, Five seventy one is in the kitty currently, so I'm minus sixty nine dollars. So yeah, well, not going too bad, but just always good to first keep an eye. four. I lost first four. I was like, I'm I'm done. Yeah, I think I won did, two games on the weekend. Did you come home strong? <laughs> no, I yeah. had the Eels, I had the Raiders. I, I, bet I got the Warriors and Dolphins. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it was a tough one. We'll pick Manly, yeah, very hard week. Mm. As always, we want everyone to be playing safe during this footy season, so please keep front of mind what are you really gambling with? And if you need free and confidential support, call 1 800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. Um, again, a big push, it's flowing at the moment. Instagram is actually pumping off the back of your Barry McDermott uh, clip that Lukey uh, put up. Uh, we got a big spike on Instagram, a big spike on TikTok. So thank you for everyone who has just joined. Uh, subscribers is basically basically going up a couple hundred every week. So that's huge for us as well. And leave a review on either Apple or Spotify and subscribe on those platforms as well. All right, it's time to get to our BSC Dogs of the Week, OG. Mm. And this is brought to you by the BSC Energy Drinks. Uh, they are, Have you tried them yet? They are the best in the business, whether you're a tradie, uh, whether you're going to training, whether you're getting after it in the morning. They have 160 milligrams of caffeine, no sugar and no carbs, especially for your tradies who might be pumping something else before you go to work, before you get into your work, before you do that hard yakka. And they are has to tested for all the athletes that – maybe the young athletes that are trying to get amongst it as well and try to find – uh, an NRL team in the future, a uh, soccer team, a, a, an EPL, whatever it may be, um, it is the best in the business. So your best of the week, Mace. All right. Uh, there's a couple of shout-outs. RTS probably played one of his best games I've seen for a minute. He was he was right up there. Appy was right up there. If it wasn't just for this young kid, when I just – even though his stats aren't ridiculous, it goes to Lachlan Galvin mm. because that young kid, he's 18 years old, right? He's a Parramatta supporter. He's told that. He was a diehard. He's a, he's a junior there. Goes to Tigers. Now he's playing against his best mate. And that one fucking play got him dog of the week. 
Shout out to Westfield Sports High. Good on you, Westfield Sports. You're up there with Toronto High, but you know what? Uh, You've you've developed some athletes. Toronto High might pip you by one. Anyway, but that try that he had and he set up when the game is on the line, right? This is when you the big dogs usually rise up. This kid gets the ball, boom, one-on-one with Blaze and bang, smokes him. Money, Buller. Mm, mm. And I'm like, that's then that's from coming off 10 minutes in the sin bin for a fucking little hip drop on Talungi. Talungi. Yeah. It's a dog you know mentality. What I mean? eh? It's a dog mentality, right? Like, and I was like, I love Appy. Appy's got that. He missed a couple of tackles in the ruck when, you know, when they slid through and they scored those tries. And I was just like, this young kid has no right to be out here acting like this. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, go on, yeah. give me the ball when the money's on the line. We're down six. We need to convert a converted try. Give me the ball and take my boy on one on one. A little bit of a shake. Right palm on the chest, and then there's an underrated ball that he threw in there to Buller. Boom! Over the other side, of the other um, the guy chasing back. I think it was Blaze. Blaze was sort of trying to get in his vision. I think it was Blaze. He turned yeah. and chased like a good kid should, good player should. Yeah. And he still got it. And I'm like that that, that send off right, fucking to tail lungy right. He mm. stand there, little fucking Galvin hanging on his hips. Should have just looked back and slapped him off right. Mm. If I was there, well, you would have stood there. Right, and I'm and I'm with Gus. Gus was, Gus and Gal, Gal were going at it. I'm like okay. That is not a fucking hip drop. That's just him. He had his back facing him. He wasn't even running. And he still had he had, still had the presence to be off, come back on, make up for it. So, Galvin, my little man, Lachlan Galvin, you're my dog of the week. And I barely give it to Bax. Yes. I'm yeah. always – I would have given it Appy even though he missed two two of those tackles. And I'm like, fuck, I have to give it to Galvin, yeah. my boy. Well done, kid. I like it. Lachlan Galvin, BSC dog of the week. Um, two backs again this week. This is rare for us, mate. It's rare. Um, you're, you, you very rarely give it to a back, mm. specifically a half. It's fucking half. So shout out to Lachlan Jeez. Galvin. Um, but my one is a back this week as well. I'm going Dylan Edwards yeah. uh, for his uh, – it feels like it was so long ago now on – Thursday night? It was, was it Thursday? Thursday? It was Friday? Thursday. Thursday night. Um, no Nathan Cleary, no Fisher Harris, clearly leaders of the pack, uh, leaders of this team. Mm. Uh, I know Isaiah Yo's still there. I know Jerome Law is still there, and they've got a star started lineup. But um, I'll rattle through the stats, but the stats are just that. Like, this is this is the norm for him week in, week out. 24 for 246, 74 post-contact metres, one line break assist, one try assist, six tackle breaks, and a solo try that summed up the night, like I we, mm. we sort of mentioned before. And it sums up Dylan Edwards. Whenever there's uh, a ball on the ground, where, whenever there's desperation that needs to be had, this is, this is why I think people call for him for – higher honours and I know he represented his country last year but Origin is a different beast and, mm. and that's what that's the more topical um, yeah. I, I suppose contest that we have in our game and you can understand why people think I, I think he would do a great job there are still choices uh, currently that I have in front of him right now with a couple other fullbacks but by no means do I do I think he would do that jersey a disservice uh, and they love him at Penrith he's yeah. the heart and soul of that team yeah. and with no Nathan Cleary um, and no Fisher Harris, no Sorensen either. He's pretty. Sorensen's yeah, another he's big out left back. Rather. He he really took it upon himself to uh, even an underrated part. The two conversions early. So when Solid. when Roosters, you know, go behind with a couple of tries. If the game was eight ten, you know what it's like, mate. Mm. Eight ten, eight nil, ten nil. You sort of just different look mindset. at it a little bit different. When you see Dylan Edwards, the the third string kicker from the last three or four years for him, because they've had Nate <laughs> yeah, and they had Critter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's gone. Right. So then Dylan Edwards slots a couple from ten out from the mm. sideline or from the sideline from the Taruva try. You just sort of go, here we go. Like it just makes it mm. that that much harder. It sucks. Um so shout out to to Dylan Edwards, my BSC dog of the yeah. week. Realistically, he's another one of. Realistically, another. he could get that every week. Yeah, he's just and 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 it, when he he's desensitized everybody. Like when Tal Malola was doing shit like that, two fifty plus a week. Yeah, it's like fuck. He's just the best player in the comp. You know, the only time that players like this get the probably BC dogs of the weeks for us is when the other stars are missing. The other dogs had they didn't they weren't dogs because <laughs> when you got James Fisher Harris, yeah. Doug, you got Nathan Cleary, Doug, Scotty yeah. Sorensen, Doug. You missing those. You missing those amount of players. It makes them. It makes the team look more human, mm. and therefore it stands out even more so than when they do it week in week There's out. A clinic, man. Um, all right, mate. Got some good YouTube questions this week. Those are pumping at the moment. So if you're new to the show and you're not aware, we base our show and we like to start our show 
there are a lot of um, maybe podcasts or, or even 360s and Channel 9s that, you know, they build their own show. They've got their own topics that they can build into. We like getting the feedback and the interaction with our listeners. So this is our favourite part of the show. Mm. This one comes from... Clips 327. This is one of my faves we've had in a minute. <clears throat> Thanks for the great pod, Skipper Scope, and Triple OG Widamu. The dynamic between two X players with different journeys in the NRL is refreshing and insightful. Thank you, brother. Got a question for the pod. I hear more and more young players on podcasts and interviews say they don't actually watch footy. As in, mm. won't sit down and watch an 80-minute game that is in their own. I understand players are probably inundated with video and footy in general at training, but that seems slack. He played eSport. He said he was definitely watching his competition. In short, any insight why players have this attitude? Yeah, nice. that's a good question. Mm. Um, you're probably on the money there when they, you do get inundated, inundated? inundated inundated, with a lot of video at, at training, right? Yeah. And it's not the actual game. It's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no commentary. There's nothing. It's from Eagle Cam, different angles, all that kind of stuff. Then you do an individual video. Yep. So it's very specific video. It's nothing, nothing like the game, right? Mm. I used to, we used to do that all the time. Times haven't changed that much. Where you like, there's no, there was the same individual video. It was the same team video, and we still, and I still watched every game. So quickly rattle off how many video sessions you think you would go uh, as a team and individual throughout a week, just so people know. So you barely go in there and watch a full game. You never do. You just watch never. clips. You just watch clips of your your. You say your left four, right four middles. Yep. You're watching your different little pods and then you come together as a team. So you're probably watching as a team probably like the Monday and Tuesday review, preview. So you review the game like we do now. All right, so let's just go Sunday to Sunday would most likely go Monday review. Yeah. Just say, for instance, it might be Tuesday, but just say Doesn't Monday yeah, review. Monday. Um, you might do a second review session uh, focused on your edge with your groups. Yeah. So it might be edges, middles or – uh, backs forwards, mm. for instance. Then you start. You might have a break. Then you'll be doing a team preview. Uh, no, sorry. Then you'd be doing individual review, uh, and that might be specifically for uh, one on one. And that's all around. You can be doing individual video anytime, anywhere. So it's, it's around the clock. So during that day, you just need to do like your individual video and tick right. it off. Yeah. So it could happen during your lunch break or yes. anything like that. So it's not allocated. Like at a specific time, but you just do it, you know, whenever you can. Yep. You can do it for hours. Then you do uh, again. Go back to edges or sp uh, specific parts of the field where you you uh, where you preview the next team, yeah. and then to finish off captain's run, you'll do a yeah. entire group, maybe clips of maybe five to ten clips of preview. Yeah, as well. because so because, because training's, training's film, but training's film now. So you're watching your training yes. as well. So you're doing all that kind of stuff, but like probably all collectively all together, you're probably watching about two hours or something. Mm. Maybe something like that, two yep. and a bit. Maybe some halves are watching more on some other players. Yep. So when you do an individual video on yourself, you're not just watching yourself, then you'll be watching the opposition, right? Yeah. So that that can depend. You could be sitting there for hours if you want. Most of the guys who are fucking students of the game, they're sitting there for hours. They'll sit there and study all the little things from a Cleary, from all the points of views, like mainly halves, man. Like, and forwards will sit there in their little little groups and go, okay, this is how we get it. This guy, this is what he does when it gets late, left arm carry, all that kind of stuff. You know, it's very, very specific. But it ain't a shitload. So I think it's up to the individual, right? If you yeah. love footy, you go watch football. It ain't, it's, I'm not sure if it's a, it's a generation thing now, if is it's it, like, I just don't want to watch it. The question is, is it an advantage though for the players in so, your opinion. So the guys that just say they do all that video, but then you've got the proper footy heads that go home and watch. It's an advantage to games. do everything. Yes. You do all your I video agree. and you watch everybody in game time. Yeah. Because it's totally different what you're, what you're watching on a fucking TV screen compared to watching Cleary on the big screen and going, shit, is that how he gets done? Yep. Is that how he does it? That's why. Like, oh, that's what I need to work on. You know, looking at like the the advantage game, the field position game that all the top teams do when you're a bottom fucking team. Mm. You're like, fuck! I need to do that. Yeah. I need our middles to do this. We need to get certain parts of the field to do this. You know what I mean? Watching it live, you understand it. Watch it on a TV screen on the big. Th it's not like that. Mm. You don't get a real feel for the game yeah. and the flow of the game because it's not in flow. It's in little fucking checks on the, on the field. So like everything's written down. Uh, 50, uh, Fifty second minute. Um, 
a set going in, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Everything's sectioned off. So you're not watching the flow of the game. I used to love watching the big dogs play. Yeah, so do I. When I was younger, and I still do, and I went off the game for probably when I retired for two ga- for two years because I was traveling. I wasn't yeah, fucking natural. interested. Yeah, same I was, as me. I was in the game for like 17, 18 years. So you, you get, just want to get out. You got rugby league fatigue. We all get Yeah, it. you yeah. get it. But like when we were playing, we were doing all the video and yeah. then watching the game. We'd go to some, come, we'd come to my house and watch the games. Yeah, same. If we weren't playing, it was just like we were obsessed with the game. All the great but guys like Joey, JT, all those great players are nonstop watching footy. Yeah, and they still watch the footy. Cooper Cronk, all the all the students of the game. A, a lot of I'll give you a, a couple of examples of players I've done interviews with over the last couple of years that I know are footy heads and watch a shitload of footy just through having chats with them away from the podcast. Uh, Reese Walsh, footy head. Yeah, when we we're in the car together playing that golf episode, yeah, um, I had a chat to him about ga- certain games that had been played already. Loves his footy. You can see it. Why wouldn't you? Uh, Nathan Cleary, again, me and him had a few chats about footy outside of the podcast and you can tell he's just watching so many games. And uh, Scotty Drinkwater was a real surprising one. He just pretty much watches every game. He was telling me – and this is, again, like not stuff that was going to get on the podcast or get on the show, but Mm. just talking talking footy with them about certain players, you know, what they're doing. And I think it's really specific that – or – it's no surprise that all of those guys are playmakers. I think in particular mm. uh, playmakers, halves, creative players should be watching. Yeah. If I'm if I'm a coach, just say if if I'm um and, and it strikes he strikes me as this type of guy right now. Benji's been criticized, right, for his, his coaching. He, uh, whether that's true or not, but I guarantee I bet you I bet you Benji gets with Lachlan Galvin and just asks him a few questions about mm. like other players and, and I, I, yeah. I, I I could just see that. I look at Galvin, uh, I think he's a footy head. That's not working, Loki. That hasn't been working, yeah. Um, he looks like a footy head, Galvin. Yeah, he Means, does. Yeah, I could just tell that he's been watching every fucking game and he would watch every game till he retires. Yeah. And I don't, I know, I'm not sure where I've heard these, like a lot of players come out. Who's the players that have come out? Sorry, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. This is his question. I'm not even sure that players, I think a lot of players are obsessed yeah. with the game the as Mitchie well. The Mitchie Pierce episode. So Mitchie, uh, well, Mitchie Pierce, Mitchie Pierce is the opposite though, Lukey. So that's what I was referencing to. So Mitchie, you know. Pierce is a footy head. He's a footy fanatic. And he gets, yeah. he, his example was he gets it from Joey. And, uh, yep. and and being around those guys and how much Joey loved watching the game and yeah, and other like, and other halves that sort of come through, but I th- I do think it's more not saying that uh, all forwards don't watch, but I think it would be more halves that are just locked into footy. Adam mm. Reynolds, Luke Keary would be a footy head, all those sorts of. Yeah. Well, they're looking for a lot more cues than they are with forwards. Correct. Yeah. You know, I just think a lot of forwards hit the, the best forwards are watching a lot of video. Yeah. Because and then especially the ones that are playing seventy to eighty minutes, the locks and everything like that. Front rows will be watching everything. You'd be surprised. They're all in there watching a lot of video, but I'm not sure if they're watching the games. You know what I mean? Like the games live on yes. Friday night. Are you yeah. watching the game, kid? Did Some, you? Because sometimes I walk past. You watch the game last night. Nah. Like fuck. What'd you do then? Mm. I don't know. That's probably why you are where you are. I think. Most players would watch Thursday nights mm. just because it's not much to do on a Thursday night. Whether they might, you know, you might have certain things on on the weekend. That's generally what it was like. I'd say Thursday and Friday na- night games get the most viewership yeah. from players. And then, uh, yeah. And, uh-huh. and, and then, if you're not a player who doesn't watch, start watching because it's a different perspective. Yeah, I agree. Uh, good question. All right, this one is from Hayden Martin. 1477, question for both of you. Whether it be middle or edge, so I'm going to say middle and edge, who were the best defensive players you played with during your career? Mm. So whether it be first contact, reads, wrestling, etc., across the club, state, test, whether it be individuals or a group or players you defended with, love the sh- – pardon me – love the show and keep smashing it. So Mace, I just want one middle, a one forward and one back. All right, when you say defensive plays, it's not like the best hitters, is it? It's the smartest defender. Well, it's, smartest it, it, it's your discretion, mate. Danny so, Badiris. Yeah. Danny Badiris, the best defensive middle that I've played with. You said that so, like, adamantly. Because like he's, he's the, the movements, the detail, the amount of how he wanted to hit you, where he wanted to hit you was precise. The video that he, the video that he used to do, the detail that he used to have all the time on everybody, he would know everything. And he was in the middle middle and he was a lightweight – and I play some great hookers, him and Cam Smith. That's the difference. His defense. That's why I pick him over Cam Smith because mm. of he's the better defender. It's fifty mm. percent of the game. Yeah. And he used to go after it all the time. In the backs, and if you're talking about halves and everyone like that, like 
Center, no, winger, center, fullback. wingers, and I just think the most posi- best position, hardest position on the field is probably like at your yeah, right four and right three. Mm. And like Trent Barrett was probably one of the best defenders. Oh yeah, well yeah. Because you big run into man. Trent Barrett, man, as a yeah. back rower. Him and Joey on par as halves. Yeah. That's why like, when I play with those guys in Test, no one's getting through the edge. Mm. Like that was smart, and Baz can fucking hit. Don't yep. get it. Don't get the good looks fucking mixed up. Yeah, it will bash you up. He folded a few big boys. He got eh? Eric Growth mad. Oh. <laughs> and this is when Guru couldn't be hit. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's on YouTube. Maybe have a look at it. Bang! Just full Mongo Country Tamora strength. Ooh. Got it. He's got a big fucking hand. So don't sleep on him. Baz would have been in his prime 95 to 100 of the best you reckon at yeah six? man he was he was big bro yeah. he's like 6 3 100 I don't know, 103 kilos i seen him at the golf day the other yeah. day he's still in super good nick super good man. assistant yeah. coach at the moment i and, just uh, think yeah he slept on defensively you yeah. never used to like you never because i used to play in the edge yeah my job was to spot the four and three men up and like where's baz and where's joey yeah like, give me on the other side you know what i mean because they could hit they'll, they'll pick you they'll hit you up up upper body or Joey used to get you straight in the guts, pick you up. Yep. And that's the difference when you look at JT and Joey as well. Yeah. So you got Cam Smith, Badiris, JT, Joey, play with both those guys at their all four guys in their prime. And I'm like, fuck. They both had their strengths, but Joey was a better defender. Yeah, Joey was. You know, good. like he was he, pff, there's some origin games, man, when he played at nine mm. and he just bang you. So it was like it was reluctantly played yeah. nine too. <laughs> in defense. <laughs> um, you know, so yeah. <laughs> So yeah, there's a difference between being a mad hitter. This is why I'm not putting the hitters there. Yep. Otherwise, I'll be picking fucking Luke O'Donnell and, you know, Petro and Ogre and Sonny Bill and Roy Asatasi, all these guys that I've played with. Yep. But defensive players, yep. that's my that's my grab on it. All right, let me put hitters in then. I'm yeah, put, put the hitters in. I'm, I'm going to put my hitter in. Steve Maddai for me on yeah, the edge. Far right. Um You've got to take it into consideration for this reason, Mace. It's like what you're talking about with Trent Barrett. Like, yeah, technically – he might not be the best wrestler or the or the, oh, or, or the, had the better control, but players didn't run at our edge because of him. And that that is defending. Yeah. Like if you have players that know a game plan or should be running a certain line but refuse to run it because they want early ball because they don't want to yeah. punch that hole at Kieran Foran like they should be running because they're worried about Steve Maddai, you're halving the field, mm. and that's what and that's what Steve he, Steve Maddai for me. He gave me so much more confidence. He made he, he my tackle count dropped yeah. by about ten to fifteen because I didn't have to make as many tackles. It's real. They were worried it's about real, him it's real. But like that hit, the famous hit on Dave Tyrrell. <laughs> I've seen that. Right, Dave Tyrrell was running in the middle of the field. I was I was on the bench for 2015. 2015. Yeah. Were you, I don't know yeah. if you were. Were you on the field at the time, mate? I don't know where I was. Maybe me and you were sitting on the bench at the time. He's doing the, the middle's jobs. He, he comes launching in, hits Dave Tyrrell. The other one was same team, different front row. This time it was George Burgess. off the. And you talked about Eric Gross yeah. not getting hit. No one licked the Burgess brothers not off the kickoff. Not back then. No, but not back then. This is Georgie 2014-15, right? Not ever. Can you remember a Burgess brother getting linked <laughs> no, off, off no, a kickoff no, ever? No, no, Except no. for Steve Mellon? Not in that time, but they were in their peak then. That was 13 or 14. They're, they're peaking. That was 13 or 14, yep. Yeah. So yes. that was the prime That's George prime Burgess. Georgie. Um, I remember the hit so vividly because yeah, Georgie's coming straight at me and I'm shitting myself because I'm like, mm. fuck, here we go. Just throw the body in front. And I just go to go turn the body just at the last minute. Stevie comes from nowhere, cleans him up, um, and then the big melee happens. Fozzie's in, of course. You know, Fozzie yeah. loves it. And everyone comes screaming in. And uh, Sammy was in there. And I, the first person I went to go was Sammy. You know what? Sammy's <laughs> going to go crazy for his little brother as well. Oh, so Sammy man. comes over. And w- when we got time to sort of just everyone just calm down after it, I, I told Sammy, I said, bro, like that was clean. Yeah. He hit him clean because everyone was thinking it was high. It was awful. It was right there, man. Yeah. It was so clean. I don't know where he generated his power for. Like, <sighs> shout out to Stevie Maddow. One of, uh, if you're talking hitters, He's the top three best hitter of all time. Mm. Probably nearly number one. Mm. Oh, that's that's how good he is in my head. I'm like, as I said, I went the defensive smartness, fit, all that sort of shit. Yep. That guy's a pure hitter. I'm, I'm not. I'm not even going to say anyone's better. Shout out to Tony Carroll. Tanza. Tanza was a protector and he used to half the field as well. So people who can half the field and yep. you're like, when I was have the spot Lockie up, I'm like, fuck, yep. early ball, man. Yeah. I ain't going to hit inside, outside shells or inside because tons are standing there and he will drill you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and that's, yeah. that's, that's the difference where you got blokes like the, the Sonny Bills and that. I remember playing with Sonny in his prime. No one would fuck with him. Roy, yeah. Ogre, all these guys are all proper hitters. 
Yeah, it's 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 <laughs> Stevie Matai. Stevie Matai. Stevie Matai. Yep, that's my back and my forward. Uh, opposite edge. This is what made this team so great even before I got there. Glenn Stewart. Yeah. I think it was a real underrated part of his game. I think everyone understands the silky skill that he had. Yeah, silk. Um, but because they because of Stevie, we basically made as a back row, I'd make 15 to 20 tackles per game. That's great. And because they were going the opposite edge, Gif- Gifty was a minimum 30, sometimes 40, 45. Yeah. Uh, he was super clean. He had really good technique. He was a very good one-on-one defender. Um, and he had really good – Strong. Like wombat strength. Yeah, you, look- <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't get out of Gift. Wombat. When people – he was like a he was like a snake. The yeah. harder you – like his brother was nicknamed Snake at the back. But whenever Gift got you – Yeah. The harder you tried to wrestle, it was like – because we did, I, I got it in when we did a pose against each other. Running against him for a couple of years, the harder you try to get out of it, the, the harder yeah. he squeezed. And he had so – because Ches was – they used to spot Ches hard back in the day, yeah. right? So he was d- defending inside Ches and um, he was as good as they got. Chocky was another really strong candidate. But he's a good defender. Watt- but Chocky's a good defender. Yeah. Like the guys like Luke O'Donnell's, the edge defenders, they were great. Bobcat was a great edge defender. Yeah. You know, so it's one of the hardest. So one of the hardest positions to play. Boyd Cordner was a great right forward. Boyd defender, was great left four. Like he was, yep. he was awesome. Like guys who just who can sort of go. Ah, oh, you're not really going to get at the three man much because the four man is so good. They're the ones that you watch out for. Boydie was the best of both, where he had such good control, good engine, but he could also lick you too if you yeah. If, yeah, yeah, if you had a good. Yeah. Boydie's. I remember, he come, remember I come back from um, France first time, and Boydie it was about 2012, right? And he was a young boy, right? I remember it was my third or fourth game. Ran straight and pumped me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, fucking hell. Noted. No, I was like, all right, yeah. all right. Because I just lined him up. I was just thinking, okay, and he just went fucking bang, just rattled me back. I was like, oh, you little fuck. Yeah, got yeah. me good. Yeah. Proper. I, I ran straight at him off of um, – one of the, the hardest hits everyone, anyone's ever hit me, actually. Yeah. I put him on top five. Yeah. Boyd, young little Boyd in 2012. Yeah, we're at Brookie. Lick me. We're at Brookie and I, we got a quick tap and I used to try to really sneak up on players off the tap. So I used to get the wingers to get it in real yeah. quick. Got it, ran straight at Boyd. He licked me and I got sprayed by pretty much everyone in yeah. the team. He had ma- man running, strength at 16. Why are you running? This is – and he was – this was 13, 14. So he, this is Australia, New I, South Wales. All the boys are like, why the fuck are you running straight at Boydie for? <laughs> I got, I got what the I perfect deserve. technique because he ain't that he ain't like six five no. but six two perfect yeah. technique shoulders like this good dip. one of the greats yeah good technique all right this one's from Lachlan Sutherland question for you boys long time listener L one baby just wondering what you think is the ideal pair of body types to pair in for your props in the modern day and age mm. I like the idea of a big bustler and a lighter more mobile uh, workhorse so his example was uh, Adam Fanua Blake with the X Factor. Yeah. And Mitchie Barnett as a toiler, and the other one is uh, Jordan McLean and Ruben Cotter. Like you've got the the big body, the uh, taller guy that can you rely on for probably the tougher carries, and then you've got the workhorse who's going to do like a lot of the defending. Mm. Do, you, do you think uh, you, you think about the? You always speak about you and Ogre in the yeah. plane in the front row. Great I think Ogre, and, Ogre and Roy Asatasi. Did you get that on you, did it? No, Ogre and Roy Asatasi was probably. The best that I've yeah, had. Give it to me while you talk about that. So the um, difference was that Roy had such good footwork and he had pace and he could bang and play big minutes and Ogle was just that other guy who was just a battering ram. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those those two props I reckon in, in my head are probably the best two props that I've played with because I was the third the third one. I think they had they had the good mix last year when they had Flegler and they had Payne Haas and then they had Carrigan. Mm. That's why it's hard to beat with like blokes like that, and you've got a guy like Payne Haas who doesn't stop Flegler. He's got a little bit of footwork, and then Carrigan has got that third sort of wave when he can play block shape and all that sort of stuff. So, I think I played my best football behind those two. But in the modern in modern day game now, I, I, you can't go past Fisher, Harris, and Leota. Yeah, and they're both nuggety. They're like, yeah, they're a different body type. Yeah. They're not like Tino. They're not like they're more like six foot two, hundred I reckon ten kilos. Balls of muscle can hit good, get through good minutes, can ball play, can do everything right. Powerful, quick, quick. Yes, air, quick, quick leg speed. Yeah, quick leg speed that can f- get over the ten meters, find this, find their front, or break through you. Right. I think the best combination in the game now. I think if you look at Flegler and Payne Haas, and then you had Leota and Fisher Harrison last year's grand final, two of the best teams. Who got over the top of them? Mm. You know, the, yeah. the quicker leg it was speed. A good battle. It was a great battle. Yeah. It was a great battle. But you look at those two and go, yeah, they got they got it because Leota ended up getting that try and setting it all up for the for the finale. Yeah. 
But I think um, it went and it's just like the game, like 20 minutes, it felt like Penrith dominated. Then the middle period, Payne Haas played yeah. 80 minutes, kept yeah. on going. Flag last scores a try. Mm. Um, it's pretty even. It was pretty even. Can't blame it? the front rows. And then Penrith come home. Strong. Yeah, you can't blame the front rows. But that, they, they were the four best props in the game at the end of the end, end of the year last year. Right now, if you look at a Fanua Blake and a Barnett, that's pretty good. Yep. I don't mind that. Barnett's putting about five or six kilo. He looks a lot stronger. Can find his front a lot more because he's in back row in Newcastle. He's a lot lighter. Yeah. So I think yeah, take when, Penrith when, out of it. We, when Fanua Blake's you, when Fanua Blake's on, he's fucking hard to beat because you got a Barnett just doing all those little dirty things, and you got a uh, Torhu Harris as well cleaning up a lot where he can just move around the ruck. Yep. Take a lot stick, of the lion's share. Right. Stick to the front rows though. Right now, take away. Mo- I think everyone would agree. Fisher, Harrison, Leota. The, 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 now, the, the, right one. now. You don't think they're still best in the league? Right now, Fisher's well, not playing. Obviously, oh, yeah. like, obviously yeah, if, but like, if they're fully fit. Like, I'm, you're taking Payne Haas and Flegler out because they've now played yeah. different teams. So 2024, your best front row rotation, uh, who is it outside of Penrith? Because I think I Penrith like the is the Warriors. I like yeah. what they're doing with Fanua yeah. Blake and Barnett because Fanua Blake needs more ball. Mm. When he gets like 20-plus hit-ups, 20-plus touches, you know, out the back about five or six times, they usually win. Mm. You know, Barnett. They're flowing. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? They usually win. He needs to get Barnett back does into the shit that. Carries yeah. And, and, and defense then, for him? Yes. Yep. That's what I mean. That's that's what I'm saying. That's the balance of a team. They're yep. well balanced. And then you've got the back row, all that sort of shit. But with their one two punch in the middle, Barnett's just bang. Like he gets off, and he gets off the back of Fanul Blake. It's not like he's got, you take that tough run. Mm. He's smart, but Fanul Blake. Mm. You just need a Barnett just to ran that thing home. And then Egan comes out and he plays a little bit of footy. He's hard to stop. When they get that roll on over the drums are playing, all that sort of shit, they're hard to beat. So I think now, right now in today's game, they're the, they're the best because if you're talking combination-wise, yep. not the biggest names or anything like that. Yeah, they just complement each other yeah, better than yeah, a you lot need of other that. Terms. Yep. All right, I like that. All right, let's get into the games, mate. Thursday, 8 p.m., we talked about it. It had our BSC Dog of the Week. feels like it was two weeks ago now with Easter Come weekend. Eh? Uh, the Roosters against the Panthers, and the Panthers win 22 to 16. Mace, that is nine straight for the Panthers over the Roosters. Are we about to see four in a row? Is it Penrith and distant second? Yeah. Well, I thought this game was going to be the one. They'll back the Roosters. Same. Same. Fuck. I don't know what's going on. I don't know. Penrith are just so how did good, they, mate. How did they do that? Everyone's oh. bewildered now. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not backing against Panthers all year in a big game. That they should just be a rule. rise to the occasion. That should they be a might rule lose a random game in um, wherever. I don't they lost care. They to the Tigers last last year. In you the know rep. what I mean? They'll do that. They'll they'll do something out of Bathurst. You might get them fucking slipping. Yeah. Around 16, all the Origin <laughs> players are coming back. But yeah. other than that, if they're all guns blazing, they're ready for you. They've prepped for you. You're getting fucking done. That's my rule for the year. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I'm, that's I'm it. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. And I'm just like, you know what? When are they going to hand the reins to Sam Walker? I don't know. You can't. You just can't let that that kid, whatever he played against the South Sydney team, and then someone comes back and Kiri comes back. It looks all over the place. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but that was going back to Penrith. They are clinical as hell. Yeah. Are we going to get? We'll get to the Taruva and everything like that. But yep. like, I just think when they how clinical they were. I just looked at where they scored those tries and like, why can't everybody do those tries where Taruva just scores and there's five meters out there? Why doesn't everyone do the block for block for block? Yeah. They do do it, yeah. but it's not as clinical and they don't do it as good. It's like Melbourne back in the day. Everyone doing their job. Yeah. So when they do, just say the post are here and they just get to about four metres of that left post, right? Four yeah. metres of left post. So they can get a four, four six split, right? With the, even the fullbacks in there. But the lead runner is trying to get in between A and B. And then the other guy's trying to get outside the four men, get the three men involved. That's the second block. And the mm. third block, Dylan Edwards just comes from nowhere and it's just like tip, tip, done. To, to get that is a lot of detail in defence. Mm. I was looking at it a couple of times. I'm like, and the Roosters should be a lot more detailed than that. The four men should be about three or four metres the other side of the post so he can drag his middles in. Because all you're looking for is one fucking lead. It's Lindsay Smith. Mm. It's not Tao Malolo in his prime. Mm. So the markers can just split, right? Yep. And make Kenny, like I always say to all the middles, 30 centimetres or half a metre in the middle is the five metres you give up out on the fucking wing. Yeah, good point. So make him play early. Make Kenny play early, then you then you can split off the lead and then get at the guy out the back. Make him play early and then get at the guy at the back. Make him play early. Then you can fucking move. Mm. But if you get stuck in the middle, and this is what happens when they pick on rookie middles and guys who don't understand fucking what's going on and fatigue. you got three players, fatigue, everything like that, three players covering one fucking lead. Mm. That's what the four man's got to drag him out. 
right? And just fucking move quick. Hold his width. Hold his width. He needs to hold his width. As soon as he doesn't hold his width in that butcher or whatever, they're gone. You're fucking done. Mm. Because Dylan Edwards is coming from behind to play the ball. And so he's giving that, those other guys, the four, the, the four on that side, they might throw another one that way. Yeah. And then you're really fucked. Yeah, they don't see it coming, do because they? Kenny, because Kenny comes out a little bit. He steps back, comes back a little bit. The lead runner is outside B, cuts late. Mm. So he's outside of A. You know what I mean? It's clinical. I just mm. re ran and fast forward. That was like, my God, that is like that, mate. Why, why, they, why do they keep doing that all the time? Why don't other teams just go block for block for block and score all the time? Because it's not clinical like that. It's coaching. And the, lead, and the leads don't, they're not genuine. Mm. They're like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get the ball. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Especially that second lead. He's yeah. the main guy. And everyone is genuinely thinking they're going to get the ball. Well, they, it's proven over three or four years now that if you're in the right position, you might get the ball. And and I'm just like, you can stop that, but you need to be on defensively so sharp. You've got to make Kenny play. You, and it all starts in the middle. Because I know I played in the middle for fucking 17 years and we would go back to every play and the coach would be like, why don't you put fucking pressure on the nine? Mm. Why don't you put pressure on the, on the guy out the back making play a little bit fucking – little bit earlier. Mm. You know what I mean? You can go back to the littlest things. Sounds like you're things, getting pissed off about the-, the It sucks, sucks because the middle should be no better, yeah. right? Especially in the Roosters and, and most teams who play against Penrith. It's detail. That's why you give detail a lot of the middles and they just fucking goes outside their head. Mm. You stop those tries. You, you talk to any outside back. What happens? Why, why did you stop that try? Oh, because you put more, def, more pressure on the nine. You made him play real early. Yeah. You made the seven play earlier. Good, good outside backs will let the middles know when they're doing 100%, well. 100%. So they'll come in and it. tap you on the fucking yeah. back of the head. Good inside pressure. Yeah, and they snicker it when it does. And, goes they, and the, plus they're clinical. And so, so I just thought that Roosters would be all over that shit because they're very detailed in defence. Yeah, and they got done fucking three times. It's a good point, mate, with the on the edges because when Taruva was scoring those tries and there's like fuck, hardly anyone around him and then when the Roosters uh, – and Roosters have been so good for the first three rounds. When they have the ball, it felt like Penrith had the overlap. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Just so I don't they, know. What, I don't know what they do. It's their spaces. It's got to be coaching, but mate. it's the spaces and it's the detail, right? Because yep. I can see that. Because that's a little bit of zero, right? Yeah. How he sort of that's a lot of detail involved in the in the in the middle bit. Yeah. And I can see why Penrith are the, are the kings. Yeah. Because if you listen to zero, your detail will be fucking ten out of ten. Yeah. That's how he. Who was the defensive coach over there yeah. for fucking four or five years? Yeah. Him. There's a difference between the playing group that have of course tried and tested that have. Lived it now. But of course. Like you can have good coaching. You can have Wayne Bennett that can come in and coach whatever team it may be, but it still takes him a, a oh, while 100%. to implement. All right, watching video, review, preview, and going, this, these are the actions. These are the actions. And players need to see it continuously and see it work. And Penrith has seen it work now for three, four but years. But they live and breathe that whole um, mantra of like next man up mentality. The best of it. They've got Eisenhuth and these blokes coming off the bench and Lindsay Smith starting for a Fisher Harris and other guys, Garner coming in. Same mentality as the starters. Yeah. It's easy to say next man up mentality. Yeah. You're not fucking living it. You're not breathing it. You're not going out every week when fucking four, three or four starters are out. They're not world-class players that are coming on the field. No. Nah. Do you know what I mean? Like and that's, but that's what I'm saying. It's a system and yeah. they get plug in place. You can get Fisher Harris out and put a Lindsay Smith in there, he's still going to do the job. Yeah. The eyes are a grant. The ones that come off the bench, I'm like, how the fuck are they doing? <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> bewildered. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm watching these players come off the bench and I'm like, yes, they're decent players, right? But it's not like they're just they're solid first graders. Fuck. Yep. And I'll be thinking if I was a defensive coach now, I'm like, how are you stopping this shit? You fucking put Cleary back in that team, Sorensen and Fisher Harris. How are they going to go four? I fucking say it now. Yes, they are. Four in a row. Four in a row. Well, they got Manly this week too at four Fuck. points. Could be a hundred nil. All right. Uh, the the obstruction rule, mate. It's oh, been problematic God. to start the season already. Uh, I've got my views on it. I love the black and white, but uh, and on. not saying Dylan Edwards milked this one. Uh, yeah. Probably could have avoided it. Uh, is the nicest way to put it. But there's uh, honestly confirmed that it was the wrong decision. It should have been given a try. I love how he does that. Do you? No. no? Just fucking shoot. Just shut up. Yeah. Like, don't say anything. You're just like, okay, just admitting that you're wrong. Just don't yeah. say anything. It's not gonna. It's not gonna turn back the time. Not yeah. gonna change anything. Who does it benefit? So I was thinking. I was thinking that the same, right? So it's, you know, if you're a punter, whether you're a follow the team, whether you're a member, it doesn't probably do you any good. Doesn't do anything. It's just like coaches as well taking accountability and blaming players. After the game, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear from Annesley. Just once you get into review, mm. uh, or if a player gets dropped, that's the way you find out that yeah. 
the, the coaches are filthy on. Like if the bunker was to get dropped, you'd be like, oh, wrong decision. Like you don't yeah. even have to say you don't it. Know. You go, that bu- that okay, bu- they changed him out. He's yeah, out now. Yeah, he's done. So he made the wrong decision. I think that's the way you do how it. Do you, how do we fix this? How do, how, because it can't be oh, like – so I'm, I'm not even, We won't give it that much energy, right? Yeah. But I hear like, oh, we should get X players to come in and stuff like that. Yeah. They did have that. Luke Patton was in there. They my, had a couple of guys that were in there that were ex, ex players. My proposal, and I've said this before, Mason, I think this is they've got to do it. They've got to pay one person. So just say Graham Annesley uh, decides, but this, this, this is the pro- problem because it's, they're also referees that aren't refereeing on that night that are in the bunker. And they mix between a couple of them. It has to, if you want to get consistency with specific rules, then you have to have the same person in the bunker for all eight games. Because if you go to interpretation or you let some common sense, your common sense could be different from my common sense, yeah. mate. could be different from Luke's common sense. And I see it in games where um, like there are a couple of video refs, uh, like Casey Badger, for instance. I think she makes decisions way too quick. And my problem with that, or, or I think my reasoning behind that is – they want the game quicker. I, I once the game quicker, but I reckon sometimes if you make decisions quicker, and you only see one view of it, you don't really get an opportunity to dissect it as much. Mm. So I think there's panic in what she does, and then Ashley Klein, uh, or the, uh, the there are other refer- referees that take too long to make the decision. Like you see it straight away, it's pretty yeah. obvious, but they they take their time because they want to make sure that it's not wrong and it fucking drags on a little bit longer. So there's inconsistency between the the bunkers and the referees, whereas if you just have one, then at least you get the same inconsistencies or consistencies yeah. from the same person in the bunker. Or Pay group, more money. the same group of people. Well it's, well, it's group of three every every time. So you've got the head referee, you've got the head bunker pers- official, and they've got two spotters in there with them as well. So, what, so for people that don't know, they're already looking at replays as – you know, even before it goes up. So they might have seen it three or four times before we've even seen it. I'd love it. to hear live audio. That could that's another that's another part of it too. To see right? what they're actually right. interpreting. It's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like just say because the two rules are so like weird in the last two weeks with with the Parramatta guys. I mean, like Jakey standing in the line, that guy not really getting to him if you know your football, you know, you're yeah. not getting to turbo. So that's that's where the gray area is. And then you go through the line with the Hargraves one the next week, because they say go through the line so Hargraves takes it. To another level yeah. and runs nearly into the dead he's ball. He's doing line, his job, but he's, he's trying doing to get his through. job. Yeah. What about Dylan Edwards? He ran into him, mm. right? Is yeah. there any? Is there anything on the ball? Like, just say the defender. Yeah. Is there any onus on the defender? Not really. Not really. Eh? So they're ruling it black and white, and it's like I can see like the, the fifteen for um for Para was not going to get turbo. Yeah. But ready. I know Jake who was standing in the line, so that's the interpretation. But then the Hargraves one just threw me off. I'm like, he ran through the fucking line. Dylan Edwards was coming over. He ran into Hargraves. Yeah. He's through the line. Yeah. I think once you're Hargraves through- Hargraves is looking straight and like this way. I can't even see Edwards Dylan Edwards, don't know, like, Dylan Edwards knew where Hargraves was. Yeah, Hargraves is just running straight through the line. So I'm like, the interpretation there is like, you told him for, like, to run through the line. He yeah. ran through the line. Dylan Edwards, therefore, runs into him. So fucking unlucky, Dylan. You ran into him. He's doing his job. He can't look out for fullbacks and everybody coming around the fucking back. Mm. That's my interpretation of it. Yeah. You ask him to run through the middle, middles run through the fucking yeah. line. That's he took it. it. Yeah, he went all Try. Um, yeah, I think communication between the referees. You remember last year when he copped some – a referee copped some heat for it when he was talking to – I think it was Ashley Klein who was in the bunker and he sort of told him, check that. No, did you see that? And he, mm. he'd actually missed a part of it. Um I think I think that could do with some work as well. Just like I think it was maybe Grant Atkins yeah. was communicating with uh, Ashley Klein. He said, "Oh, just check that that last bit." I think communication between the refs and um, and 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 the referees telling the bunkers exactly what they saw live does. Mm. Are you seeing the same things? Um, yeah, it's a hard. But one. back to the footy. Uh, Dylan Edwards was outstanding. Obviously, uh, Brad Schneider looked like a seasoned vet. Uh, I've got this question for you right now. Where did he come from? If you're a journeyman. Uh, Canberra Raiders Super oh, League. That's right. Sorry. Yeah, I remember. Back to uh, to Penrith. If you're a seven journeyman, New South Wales Cup vet, Super League player, played three or four seasons in full time, you're asking your management to speak to Penrith and find out who their backup half next year is in. Yeah. Sean uh, O'Sullivan gets a deal with the Dolphins. Koga goes and gets a deal with the Knights. Schneider looks like. One of the top three halfbacks mm. of round four. Yeah. Oh, 
It's just, it, as I said, it's that system because mm. those guys are left. They don't have they fucking set the world on fire either when they've left Penrith. Well, that's my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying they're guns. I'm not, I thought you were saying just go and sign every backup quarterback from Penrith. I mean, halfback. No, don't sign them. You're the management of a half. You go to Penrith to oh, sign okay. them. Okay, shit. Sorry. So you can get the payday. <laughs> Smart. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know who's yeah. behind that. Yeah. Yeah, he looked all right. I was just like, he just, it's plug and place. It's just ridiculous. What a well oiled machine. Well, you're another team. You're just thinking, how the fuck can we beat these guys? How? Hopefully they're off this week. Uh, here's a question for you too. Um, with that nine in a row, was there a top team uh, that you could that you played against that you had a really good record? Like nine, nine and I was crazy in this modern day, but like Roosters are a top team. You think about mm. in the four years that they've got – so Jerome Law hasn't lost to the Roosters. Oh, really? Yeah. I think my first. That, is that a crazy on? start or what? You know how they've got these crazy like yeah. perc- winning percentages and shit. Jerome Loy started playing full time in like 2020, so he played and he would a, never a, lost. about 15 games in 2020 or, or 19, and uh, that the year he missed a few games that year and didn't play against the Roosters. Even like a Dylan Edwards probably would never have lost. Dill, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe one, maybe. maybe like maybe fish and all that. They, yeah. They've lost ones in the early Melbourne. I had a good record against Melbourne early days of the dogs, Did you? yeah, okay. from, from, from that from about 2000, 2006 or seven. Yep, probably didn't lose that much. Yeah, because I think we were at a, we had a pretty solid side as well, but they, they weren't the Melbourne that they were like you know the late 2000s, whole 2010s. But they were so I was still pretty team. good, yeah, yeah, still pretty good. But the Bulldogs, we always had a good record against Melbourne, okay. I think That's it was just one. because it was a rivalry thing. Yeah, because like Chris Anderson went down there, so like he was uh, a new gotcha. coach, so that was really embedded into all us players. Yep. Uh, Mick, start again for the Roosters. Where do you see that this form line is? Just Penrith great, or is, is it distant second with everyone else, and that's just the Roosters th- are at? Or I think we had how to beat Panthers, right? It's like when power play them, it's very ad lib football, very hard call, hard through the middle, offloads, second phase football, and play footy. You need to play football at Penrith. You cannot just play one out, one out, one out, and try and keep this possession game, the field position. Yeah. They're going to bash you. You're playing into their own, uh, in, into their hands. It's like playing against Melbourne, it was no. 10 years ago. Yeah. You had to really disrupt them defensively. Who does that? Parramatta does it the best because they go through the middle, they got offloads, you got like big junior Paulo, they're hard defensively yep. and they just – Mitch Moses plays off the top of his head, so does Dylan Brown. Yeah, they right? play with I more think, sh- your shape straight away, yeah, don't they? early in sets. And they just fucking play at you and they just non-stop. And I think um, Roosters could have done that, but they're very structured. Sam Walker, they need to take the reins off Sam Walker and just give him the team. Mm. It looks better when he does. Like he's, he's the future of the club. He would suit – his style of footy, if you let him – um, take the reins against Penrith would suit ad lib football yeah. man like and he just plays he sees what he sees what's in front of him and because he's not that dude in that team yet because yeah. it's still Kiri's team Brandon Smith's team you know what would happen in that I reckon Roosters might instead of uh, Roosters only losing by six which they did mm. I think they would either lose by 20 or they might win yeah they might you know what I mean up. yeah so it's like hard, man. Do, you, do you live and die by if you play that style of footy and it doesn't come off they might get pumped by 20 and mm. But they're not going to play it all the time. Obviously, you're going to play with some sort of structure. But yeah. it's on those long shifts and all that kind of stuff, like it's just very predictable. It looked mm. very predictable for them. The halves play. All right. Uh, Friday, a good Friday kicked off, uh, 4 p.m. The Rabbitohs just get home against the Bulldogs, 20 to 16. Uh, I was I was called this game for and I went down on the field and interviewed a couple of players, Mason. What would you think? Um, it was more just relief. It was both teams were trying not to lose mm. the game, in my opinion. Uh, but... You're obviously frustrated as a Dogs great, as a Dogs fan member. Yeah. There are signs of improvement there and it's tough to take, I I think. They're missing key pieces for sure. Uh, Most notably uh, a long-term half. Uh, Taff was good but he's not someone you'd think would be there long-term. And the middles, mate. But specifically on South. Let's start with South and then we'll get to the Bulldogs. A much needed win. Holy shit, sir. I'm just looking at the completion right there. 94%. What the? So, so they should have won. Yeah. That shows. That shows 20 to 16. Oh, they're off. Yeah. They're big off. Time. Big they time. are off. Yeah, right. I don't know. I, I, like, I'm, as a as an ex Bulldog, you know, um, I love the Bulldogs club and everything like that, but like, you're sick of like games like this letting it slide. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like they, they, if they're going to ever get, ever going to get south, it would have been on the weekend. Correct. They were off. You know what I mean? They had 94% completion rate, right? It's, mm-hmm. and they just got you by four points. Missile brought up a good point. He, he said, as a Bulldogs fan, 
there are certain games that you tick off yeah, and you, you, look, you have a look. It's Titans, they get the job done and it was a good yeah. victory. And at the start of the year, you probably wouldn't have ticked this Souths game as a, a potential I, yeah. win. But because of where Souths are at, this is a chance to get I a team. I genuinely thought we're going to win. Yeah. Genuinely. You know that. I was yeah. just like, yeah, we got it. We, we'll get it this week. Because of the, the, the cause of the reason Souths have been – they're down, right? Mm. They're right down. You've got to get them while they're down because they need – all they need is a little bit of confidence. Yeah. And they're back up. And Latrell just turned it on a couple of times here and there. And um, yeah, we, had, we had it. The game was there. Mm. You know what? There was a moment – I'm trying I've, to think of the moment, right? Try, yeah. You can pinpoint it. I've, I've watched this game fucking twice. Yeah, I've got And one. I'm like, when did it, where did it go wrong? The the tough call. Reed Money on the kick pressure on Latrell was a really tough that call. That turned him. the fucking whole thing, didn't it? I'm no. not solely blaming that, but the momentum for those guys. You Two what, quick tries. You know what was really tough for you? So the second, uh, the Whiten try. So Matty Burton um, and Hutchinson, they were sticking to the game plan. There's a good arm wrestle. It was the type of game yeah. the dogs wanted to play. They put a... Uh, kick nice and deep. Latrell's the only one back there. He's had such a good defensive line. There was like seven or eight of years. And he does he this offload. really late offload. AJ goes burning down the edge. And it was like after that point, they score, they go up 12 nil, And he's had to get out of that grind style of footy that would have – I don't think Seattle's are ready to get into that. No. And then because he gets that offload and they make a break and score, you guys started playing more footy there for a few more errors. And then at the back end of the half – Curtis Moran, no try. Yeah. You're about to break their backs. Oh, Moz. <laughs> he played outstanding. He was good. Oh, he was outstanding, Kurt Moran. Oh, that, yeah, that was a heartbreaker. This is what hurts you, though, for me. Liam Knight and Sam Hughes, 14 minutes each off the bench. You just got no big boys, mate. There's no mm. big boys through the middle. And uh, you got Salmon, Curran and Mann and Moran who are uh, trying their guts out. They're undersized. They're just defending the entire time. They're trying to throw a little bit of shape. But the main area for me from afar, you're lacking big boys in the middle and you're not going to get it. You're not going to be able to match teams who can complete at 94% of 94% with with yeah. a lack of middle. So And and South's middles aren't as dominant either. You no. go up against a Penrith, a Broncos, a North Queensland who really rely on taking that taking the game through the middle. Mm. Then you're going to really come unstuck. You've got you know, a rough. We really need, um, you know, the middles. They've got the biggest job every week. Yeah, they do. Like, and because you can't really shift the ball like side to side, everything like that, all game. You've got to establish something through the middle. So it's like they have, I reckon, the hardest job in the NRL, the Bulldogs' middle. And it doesn't get any easier. They get the Roosters uh, with with their middle coming through, and then the Storm down in Amy. So tough one coming up, um, Preston. Fuck, he's, Fuck he's, he's tough. He's I didn't know so he broke tough. his jaw. Broke his jaw, mate. He should, I should never I, let, how, let, how, how did the get, fuck did he get back <laughs> on? I'm like, he's yeah. back, Presto, yes. And I'm like, there should be just a straight, like, no, nah, he's out. That was a category one. Yeah. That was a category one. And he one. comes back, he's got like, that's toughness, man. I love I love that yeah. kid, Presto. He personifies what a bulldog is. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you got to take that element out of his control, right? And yes. you know, you're not coming back on because imagine if he gets a hit – on that jaw again. That's a whole shattered fucking face. If and you're not out for three weeks. You're out for the year. Mm. You know what I mean? Like someone, I don't know what happened. Mm. Independent doctor. No, mate. Yeah. You're not going back on, son. I've seen a lot worse given category one. How they gave that category two. That was – I was – I think everyone was sitting at home going, he's done. He's, fat, if he he's past his HIA. Was, what's happening? If he wasn't knocked out from Shaq Mitchell on the initial contact, then Stephen Crichton hits him on the back with the whiplash at the back that was just as hard because of the contact from yeah. Shaq Mitchell. He got KO twice in the same hit and broke his jaw. Fuck, he's you so tough, take this out. You've got to take this out of our hands, right? This Players is, play. I always say that. You've got to go, you're done, mate. You're done. This is the prime example of why the rule was brought in to protect players like this. From themselves. Because he's as tough as they come and he won't come off. And there are other guys who fucking do it willy-nilly uh, and go off for light, you know, 15-minute breaks just to get the breaks. Whereas look, Preston, you've got to take that because he's always going to try to – I don't know how he passed how the fucking test. How did he pass the test? test. That test's not – it's not easy. No. Oh, man. Um, Genius. All right, though. mate. The, the game on Friday, you're watching this game live too. The Broncos yeah. are outstanding. 38-12. Yes. Uh, Cowboys are killing themselves, but you can't. Um, they can't. 
get the job done against the top teams, Cowboys. So no. the form line, it's it's they were they were the only undefeated team going into this game. Mm. They play a Broncos team with Adam Reynolds, who's returning from injury after a knee uh, problems yeah, from the first, from round two. He actually looked really good. The knee looked fine with this kicking game. Um, no Walsh, no Haas. No Walsh thinking, and Haas. It's it, the, the Bronc. If the they're fair to the Cowboys, they'll dust them up yeah. here. I don't think they were ready for the rain, right? So it was a beautiful day in Brisbane. So we're sitting there, we're right on halfway, and I'm like, it just started pissing down rain in the warm-up. Did it? So the game would have just got and, – and obviously the Broncos had to play in it as well, but I just think they played a lot better. I'd assume that it had been raining all day the no, way it looked. No, just right on just like 10 minutes before the game, it started pissing down. Yeah. So that really – I think it might have rattled the Cowboys a little bit more. Here's a stat for you. They've lost eight out of their last nine in rain. There you go. Wet I weather conditions. Like you can't win. You can't win a comp. No, with no. numbers like that. Can you? Just sitting there before the game. Oh my god, it's raining. We're fucked. Yeah, yeah. like we're about to go into winter. <laughs> Get and used it fucking, to it. And it gets wet at the back end of the season and around spring as and well. And I thought they would be used to it because it gets like quite dewy and everything up at, at the Cowboys Stadium. So they refused just, to play wet weather footy, mate. They were still spreading it and throwing it around. It wasn't, but it just wasn't clinical, man. It was just like I watched it from. I was just. That's like, my point. It looks scrappy, and I'm like, I said, these guys are going to get pumped by the Bronx if they're not careful. Yeah. You know, Tristan Saylor come in there. He was dangerous as hell. Yep. Paddy Carrigan. Front, Paddy Carrigan. They just didn't so – they were relentless through the middle and their completions were great. Yeah, they just looked very far superior. Like just me looking at the game with no commentary or anything, like I said, Broncos look fucking sharp. Well, you throw a Haas and a Walsh in there. Yeah. She's different. You know what? There's a part of me now that's thinking I'm looking at the stats because Reynolds – it was a game for Reynolds. Yeah. Whereas if you throw a Walsh in there, just like Drinky. So Drinky and Val – they came out with eight, nine errors between yeah, that's them. A big right? So Val again had a, a, a stinker, but Drinky again was forcing it. That's what Walshy likes to do. Mm. The, they're the same. They you might need a safe, safe little uh, choice there. Yeah, they they uh, they refuse to play conditions because they back themselves, which is you you live and die by your strike weapons, right? But it sort of suited not having potentially um, uh, Walshy there in in this game specifically, not mm. long term, because he still would have tried to throw yeah. the double cutout. Yeah, I don't think you, I don't think anything faces him. Yeah, <laughs> fucking short sides. Yeah. Everything Same like as Drinky. Yeah, they yeah they do the live and die by it. But like games like this right now, when it's on a knife's edge and momentum can really fuck you, a Get mistake to the end coming of sets, out. Yeah, the they just refused to do that in the first twenty minutes. So mm. I could see I, I could see it watching by myself. I was just like, they're going to get blasted through the ruck soon. And because they keep making mistakes on the edge and everything, it's just like – and their care factor was just like, ah, fuck, we'll just defend it. Yeah. They just couldn't defend it because yeah. they're pretty good defensively. Yeah. And they would have the themselves. outside backs were doing it. The forwards must have been going, yes. fuck this. Get to an end of a set. And could, like we're I fucking tired. I could feel that energy. Yeah. Even though not watching it like on TV, I was like, I'll be really frustrated if I was the middle. That's what I felt like yeah. me watching it. I was just thinking like if you keep dropping the ball like back five – Yeah. Dude, you're killing us in the middle. And I think just say like, most games like, that we've been watching the last four, four – Four weeks. The people who make the most mistakes like that, the middles, they're the ones who cop it. Yeah. And if your middles aren't resilient enough or good enough to defend more than two or three sets, you fucking struggle, mate. You'll get points scored against you. 24 from 39, 61%. Yeah. You just can't win a game like that. You, you just, we talked about just before a 94% for sales and they just get home. Mm. So if you complete it 61%, you fucking no chance, especially against, even though they're missing a few tr troops. Experience Reynolds, experience Paddy Carrigan, yeah. Jordan Ricky was just kick chase and everything. Um, they were good. A good team performance. They were pretty good. What about Tommy Dearden's tackle on Cobo, mate? Yeah. Uh, I've got so early. There were sats. It's as good. Like, I think it's another regular season yeah. uh, candidate of all time. Like, we've had Xavier Coates, one of the best regular season tries of all time. And now Tommy Dearden comes up with arguably one of the better ones that I can remember. I think oh, Xavier, someone tossed up Xavier Coates, same field on Dane Gagai a couple of years ago. You remember that one? Yeah, that was good. This, that was another doozy. this is the top of one. It was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah. Just because – It's not a grand final. Yeah, just because it's not a GF, but also because it's – an origin. Tony, Tommy Dearden. Uh, he, I think he, he didn't have a better angle as what Ches did and uh, Sats did on their yeah. tackles as well. I feel like he had to come from a little bit yeah. more. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Tommy Dearden. He's a dog. Um, the Dragons versus Seagulls in Gosh. probably the worst game of the round. Saturday at 5.30 at Wynn Stadium. Credit to the Dragons for the bounce back. Um, there was rumours going around the game. Obviously, Zach Lomax, is, there's been reports yeah. that he's unhappy. He's been linked to Parramatta. He's been linked to uh, the Roosters. And there was also rumours that they'd been chatting with Manly. And it, Flano's come out now and said 
he's happy to at least have conversations. Like, oh, paraphrasing to a degree. He's yeah, a, give me some players for him. He wants some players or he doesn't want to pay anything on the cap for Lomax. So that's a big yeah. – so is a team willing to pay 800000 for Lomax? Now, that's the sticking point. So the rumour was that there's been chats of a swap Schuster for Lomax. Now, is it true? Who knows? But just say if that was to, to coincide – do you think that's a fair trade? Who, who benefits from that trade? Do, the, do both of them benefit because nah, they both want to move on? Happen. If you're looking at Schuster, what he's doing now in reserve grade, and you think, okay, was he going to come in and do a better job than Flanagan? Is he going to come in and do a better job than our back rolls or lock? Yep. And for 800? Mm. No. Nah. You're keeping Zach Lomax. Yeah, okay. So uh, also Siebes has said uh, before the game that uh, he was always going to give Shuey three to four weeks because mm. when Shuey comes back into the team, he's still a big part of their plans. When he comes back in, it's his job and he has to keep it. Yeah. So he's he set a challenge for Shuey. Uh, Shuey was good the week before, apparently not so great yeah, on the weekend. Um, and he said, yeah, he's sick of this yo-yo with Schuster where he has form, dipping mm. and, and going into first grade, out of first grade. So he wants to get some runs on the board, playing him in the middle so that when he comes to first grade, he's locked in uh, for yeah. the rest of the year. It might be a couple of weeks. I said the way he looked on the weekend compared to what he looked like last year in the Manly. It might be the jersey. Yep. might be the jersey not as fitted, but like he didn't look that fit. And he wasn't that like, you know, if he was willing to get into first grade, he would have carved the shit out of that team. Yep. Come back into the mic. You know, like he's, he looked like he was just, just going through the motions. Yeah. You need him going to reserve grade and just trying to whack blokes and taking the line on and doing things that he can do in, in first grade. Well, whacking is never going to do that. Well, That's not part of his game. Well, just be in defense. Yeah. Be Because de defensively. No misses. Yeah, you just can't be like that in first grade because yeah. you get found out. And it's all these little things that see. It's the detail, right? It's all the little detail things. If you're going to be defending on edge, it's the hardest position on the field. Mm. I don't think he's going to be edge. I think the Seeds is playing in big minutes in the middle. Because Even he's, worse. He's going to be – no, nah, he's not going to play big minutes though. I think he, he's going to be a player that is going to be required for 20 or 30 minutes off the bench. I think that's where he can be. I, I still think Shuey's the best part of our best 17. And I say our because obviously he should be. Him. He should be. Uh, the perfect role for me, for, for him, I think, is uh, sort of what Nathan Brown's doing where he comes on, on the field and plays a little bit of footy with the tip-ons. So I think he can do that better than what Brownie can do at this point of his career and still young enough. And then you don't require him for big minutes. It's 20, yeah. 30 max. Just before halftime, just after halftime, once it gets to the crucial point, you don't want all that ball playing. You get him off the field and yeah. you put on someone a little bit more rock solid and that's when you rely on Chaz yeah, Turbo to finish off the definite game. Definite role for him right, like that. You can't say you're going to play in the middle at, at lock and be our ball playing lock. And No, you're not that because you, mm. you can't play enough minutes and you'll get spotted up in defense. Mm. They'll get at him and it'll be a, a detriment to the middles and they'll fucking hate playing with him. Because you'll have to back him up and back him up because he misses not missing tackles, but he's not smacking people. In the middle, you need to defend a fucking 95% efficient tackling. Control. Control the yep. ruck. Don't be a spot in the middle. Otherwise, you're just gonna get you're gonna get your ruck blown. You see the guys, you see the teams with weak middles. They get fucking blown out. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's like fatiguing he, for everyone, doesn't we, it? You know, yeah, you need you can't and, and people aren't gonna protect him mm. in the middle, right? Because he's good enough and he should be in their top 17. The skill set that he has been blessed with. Mm. Running it like he just he needs to find his feet in reserve grade. Give me two, give me two games. Play him eighty minutes and fucking put him in first grade. That's it's hard for players to like. That's the plan to get up for to get up for reserve grade. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. When tough. you've got so much talent, he'd be like, "Fuck, fucking put me up there." He's not going to give you what you want in reserve grade. Do you know yeah. what I mean? He's going to yeah. fucking play to that level. So do you like to play him from Steve? Two yeah, more games oh, to get up. Yeah, not even that. Just bring him up. Mm, okay. Put him on the bench. Give him twenty minutes. I'm, I'd, I'd, I'd get more out of that if they brought him up in the next two weeks. Just on the bench for first grade and got him 20 to 30 minutes in the middle. He would be fucking pay dividends doing that than playing fucking 80 minutes and fucking around in reserve grade. Probably not Penrith this week. Though. Not wait Penrith. To, wait no. the week after. Go. <laughs> not this <laughs> week, Seeps. <laughs> um, let's get to the Dragons. I thought even though it was scrappy, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a tough watch. There's so many errors. Jack Bird looked physically – he was getting after it. He went after Cole. They look – Oh, they're, they're physical as hell. Like yeah. they've got big dudes like Ravalawa, Jaden Sewer, oh. Jaden Sewer, Jack Bird, and Lomax on that edge. Now you can beat that that edge with skill. Yeah. To to start the season defensively for tries, they have been the worst edge in the competition. Yeah. Believe it or not, have they? Believe it or not, 
yeah, they have. They've let in the most tries on that edge. Because okay. you think of the yeah, Cowboys yeah, yeah. games and then they've got blown out. But physically, you're going to have to fucking chuck on your shoulder pads and get ready for to defend I against. I can't believe how well. big they are. And then you got Luch, you got yep. big Luchy there as well. Like, yep. Luch is on the left with with Suli, Suli and, and Rabalawa. Like, regardless if they're not making yards, you still got to put your body in front because if you don't, they're going to go through you. This and then an offload's going to happen, or something. Something's going to there. Go back to the middle of the ruck. So if you you've got to be you've got to be effective with those guys. Physical men. They look like a bunch of men. They get their shit together. They can fucking go at anyone. They should be doing what the dolphins are doing, right? They yeah. remind me of the dolphins. Like big, physical. Uh, probably don't OGs, have the speed. Man. They don't have the speed that the dolphins have got. But physically, they should just go a bit older. They want to win their games like this: twenty to twelve, yeah. eighteen to six. They, they should have that mindset. The 42 fucking whatever that 24 was yeah. against the Cowboys. Fuck that off. Yeah. Keep it low scoring. I think they're going to be – I think they're going to they're gonna find their identity, I reckon. If we can have this conversation another four weeks, you know, I think with the, with the high size up Panthers, I'm like, they're, they're there, yeah. right? But these other ones, the, the, the 6 to 12s, it takes about eight games, you're right? We're always about eight to ten games before they find who they are. Mm. If they find who they are, St. George – they're going to be hard to beat mm. because they're big, they're physical, they're fit, and they've got a Ben Hunt who can kick you out of trouble. You know, you got a, you got the skill set there. They can score tries like Sloan, Sloan X Factors, yep. get out of yardage, bore the shit out of every team with high completions and physicality, mm. and you'll fucking end up winning more than you lose. Yep. And Flanagan knows that better than anyone. And it's just going to take a little bit of it. It's going to take a little bit. That's a flat out DNA. Yeah. Though. And I'm like, oh, they just look really physical down at fucking like, was it down in Wollongong? Yeah. Yuck. Yeah. Sad day. Just, it's always tough to play down there, eh? They just bash you. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a yuck game. Um, and they've got that team to really like to get you. The sewer, he's a he's an animal in the back row. Like DeBellin's coming off the bench. They hit hard. They all hit hard. Yeah. There's not really any person that comes in who's in that team that doesn't try and whack you. DeBellin off the bench was a nice move as well. It shows it's a full on 17 man game these yeah. days, isn't it? They looked all right. Um, mentioned the Dolphins. They were really impressive in the next game. Uh, down by 14 at one point, going uh, an un. Oh, they were down 12-0. They go on to beat the Titans 30-14. to 14. Oh, Here's a question for you. Do the Dolphins have the most underrated spine in the game? So Jeremy Marshall King, where does he rate for hookers in the game? Hammer, where would he rate for you in your opinion? Fire, yeah. Yeah. He's Keep like going. probably Keep middle going. of the pack. Katoa is looking good. And then obviously – You said that last week. When he signed that deal, he looks like a completely different player. Drop the shoulders. Drop the shoulders. Relaxed. Get to fucking playing like like he was in his fucking school a couple of years ago. Mm. That's what he looks like. Yeah. I've just signed a deal now. I'm comfortable. Wayne's happy with me. He's the guy. Team's happy with me. Yep. He's, you know, puts all the, you know, you're our dude. Take us there. Yep. They, they are underrated. They Who's fight coat? Nick Arima? Nick Arima. Nick Arima comes in and out of games. Yep. I'd love to see him solidify himself as fucking one of the most talented people in the NRL because he is. Mm. He comes in and out of games, but right? Consistency. He he's got to be that season. OG between those guys, yes. man. He's the one who's got to get those good kicks in. He can't afford to kick out in the full or miss little little details in his game. He's got to do what Caesar's doing at the Tigers. Yeah. What Chad Townsend does at the Kelvins. Yeah. yeah. With a little bit more fucking pizzazz because mm. he can attack. Yeah, he he sees little cues and he'll yeah. fucking blast you through the ruck. He's sort of like a little Stacey Jones. That's what yeah. they thought he was you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. quick like that so you don't want to really you don't want to make him play his best football because he'll carve you yeah it is very underrated because I think look the Hammer Hammer's a top five fullback in the game at the moment I love Hammer man Hammer does Marshall King at his day man he's a top he's top there's, there's some good hookers in yeah there. I know, I, don't That's know. My... Like, I mean about six or seven he'd be yeah. around about that mark yeah, yeah. Well, if you go Harry, Harry Grant I think he's my number one yep Appy too Appy fuck who else is there um, <laughs> Robson Robson, like Robson, Robson uh, Wade Egan. Wade Egan. So, so he's Mitch there. Kenny. He's right there with those guys then. Mitch Kenny. He's right there with those guys. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's, yeah. he's, a six, he's, he's a five, six, seven. Yeah. And that's pretty good. Yeah. Probably missed the cut. And probably, then Nick Arim is like Whenever we do man. this, I, I bet you there's people listening yeah, start screaming at us. Look, we don't have good. fucking screens giving us the top <laughs> tens fullback. If you have a look at my screen, guys, it's blank. Um, Dolphins look a lot fitter across the board. I like the signings already looking the grouse. Probably uh, Herbie Farnworth and Flegler have brought that winning mentality with them. Um, and Avarillo looks like, the, you know, yeah. for whatever reason, he started on the bench to start. Must, must have had a good off season. Mm. But Avarillo and, and uh, Farnworth with fucking Lockstock smoking barrels on the left there and, uh, and Asako, they've got themselves yeah. a very dangerous back five. You know what changed the game? The OG Kafusi just mm. went, you know, I'm done with this shit. Yeah. I'm fucking cracking blokes. <laughs> yeah. And then everybody followed. Yeah, he does. And they, they turned the screws on him. 
You know what I mean? I think it was like 12 nil, 14 nil. They're like, oh, this is not us. Yeah. And we're going to go after it. And then everyone's went, holy shit. So they've got that capability, right? Mm. And that's why you've got those old school guys in there because they bring that genuine threat. It's like, okay, we're fucking down a little bit, boys. I can turn it up. Mm. Kafusi can turn it up. And then he looked like Kafusi from last year. It's crazy. It's scary. Yeah. He just flicked the switch. He flicked it. And went, I'm going to crack about three or four blokes and they're going to just go, oh, fuck, who's going to come at him? Right? I wonder if he's the sort of guy that's like vocal, says anything, or just goes and does that shit. And, and then everyone just goes, all right. All right, Kafusi's back. Finn Diesel's on. <laughs> The juice is on. <laughs> the juice is on. Let's go. <laughs> then everybody followed. And I was like, yeah. Then they just, once they turned the screws on them, they just they just started playing some good football. So they've got the capabilities to go against anyone. They're sitting on top of the ladder. Good on you, Dolphins. Yeah, well done. Dolphins. You know. They were same position this time last year, though. Yeah. So it's now, yeah. the, now the next step is to get in the top eight, yeah. slew fire top eight spot. Um, I know Uncle Wayne's leaving next year, but there's some good things put in place. Uh, Jersey Flegler. Here's some stats yeah, for you, the too. The jersey was on. 50 minutes, 15 carries for 150 of the best, five tackle breaks, 22 tackles, only the one miss, nice little try assist as well. He is an elite front rower. Yeah, he is. He I was in the shadow of Paddy in pain last I year. I think he wanted to leave. He said that. Because he goes, you know what? I'm going to be in pain Haas' shadow for 10 years and mm. I won't probably get the accolades that I deserve. Mm. Good on him for going out there Back and having himself. the balls to go, you know what? I'm going to be the man at the team, the Dolphins, and then <sighs> – He's in the top 17 every week. He'll be like that in origin and test football for what do you the next reckon, five or six years. What do you reckon the Dolphins got Flegler for at that point? Fuck Whatever it, eight, it is. Eight or nine hundred. Fuck, it's they unders. Would, yeah? It's, I, I think he's – Yeah, well, he's not – I think he's going to – His gonna, next deal will be that if he if he goes to where he's going, right? Yeah. He'll, he'll, he needs – he's not in the million-dollar phase yet. He's not there. Like you've got to be in that Payne Haas and sort of Tino where it's like you're, you're that dude for four years that have been that guy. I have a feeling – I have a feeling because when he signed, remember he was – he was he, he was the, that dude, the, the number two or number three. I reckon he would have got about six fifty. No, 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 he got a shitload. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. I'll good on him. No, no, no. He did. He got a heap. Um, what about mini mini flagler, mini jersey flagler plath? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that hip drop. Yeah, that was terrible, son. Come uh, on. That's the worst one. I've that's seen. the worst one I've seen, and everybody knew it, and it was just like, oh, I said he's going to get sent off. Yeah, that's, that's how bad it was. He deserved to be. Yeah. yeah. And if you're going to like, when you just when you're trying to get rid of something. When something like this comes up, you got to fucking rule it with an iron fist. Well, they've come down so hard. I'm just saying, it's I, a send off and just four weeks, and no one will ever hip drop again. Well, I thought they've overreacted in the last couple of years. They had an opportunity to send a player off saying. for the classic, the most classic version of a hip drop. So we'll get to Graydon a little bit later. We talked about Galvin before. Him and Galvin, there's no Nothing. difference. There's grade three dangerous contact for both of them. Like, that's the match you can yeah. get. Two weeks he's going to get with an early guilty plea, same as Gelvin. They've both got the same and charge. And that's silly. I, I and I'm hey, I'm all for the players and everything like that. And like I'm, I'm, he's a good kid, the Plath guy and and Galvin, they're good. But when you when you're trying to get rid of a, a disgusting tackle technique like this, you have got to rule it with an iron fist. And okay. so nobody will ever attempt a fucking hip drop again because mm. those two tackles could have been really bad. Like, for, what are, you, are you waiting for a tib fib to pop out? Yeah, that are one. you waiting for that? Get it out of the game and fucking go, all right, six weeks and a send-off. No one will hip drop again. Mm. You know what I mean? And this is the right kids to do it to. It's not, it's not Munster, you know? It's, that shouldn't matter. It, it, I know that, but I'm saying they get real careful who they want to send off and fucking rule these and do these rules on, right? Mm. The, mm. the, the pin-up boy for that. Yeah. Like, these guys are young. So that's like, you don't really care. It's like, yeah. all right, get him off and fucking give him six weeks. Yeah, okay. You know, I'm just saying, if that was like the, the pin-up boy Walsh, would they, you know, like it's different because you want him playing every week. Yeah, but you should still. I fucking know, but I know how the game is. <laughs> yeah. It's not like that, but they just, they fucking rule like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does, it does become like that sometimes. Um, as for the Titans, mate, uh, they got blown off the park again now in the second half. Do the Titans have the cattle to get out of this right now? No. You think about... Um, some halves that have been uh, halves is clearly the spot that they need. They need some direction. They've got outsider. They've got an older Foz in there and Tanner Boyd, <laughs> respectfully. And I feel like I'm drumming down on him now, and I don't mean to be, but it's just the nature of what we do. We have to call it how we see it. He is not a week in week out halfback in this competition. He just ain't. They, there's a couple of there's a couple of halves that are playing. I like I watched Lockie Ilias um, before. Uh, the I was watching the New South Wales Cup, so Toby Sexton, uh, an ex-Titan, and Lockie yeah. Ellis were playing in that game. Um, and there's obviously Jackson Hastings over at the Newcastle Knights. There are Jonah Pezzett, who's now going to – looks like Munster and Jerome Hughes are both back this week. He's not going to be playing first grade. 
there's a plethora of decent halves out there that can Gold do Coast a job. have to go try to get themselves a half. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're going to struggle this year because they lost Tino. You know, um, he's their captain, soul, spirit, everything like that. Like mm. he, like they go off how good he goes, and um, yeah, they haven't got him. So these other blokes have to. It's going to be a tough year for the Titans. Uh, for Feeder and Campbell, both come back. They look a little they bit look, rusty. They look way better. They were, they were, the team was better. They were okay. They'll be better yeah. for the run. Yep. Yep. Campbell's dangerous, man. He's, he looks like he's like – he's never going to go – look at the preseason that he has. You go, fuck, he's put on weight. Hmm. He's just going to be stronger inside. He's, he does just, look a little bit you're stronger. Talking and, like yeah. two kilo. He looks stronger, right? He's, yeah, been, yeah. he's been in the lab. He's been working his ass off. He looks strong. He's always – but he's just got like – his old man wasn't that big. Yeah. He's strong as fuck, but – I think he's going to be bigger than his old man. He's like, taller. He's yeah. taller, but he's just like – he's got a little bit – he doesn't have to have that much muscle. Not on. too much more. No, no. Just a little bit and more. Fafita, he's going to take about three or four games to get back to his best. But he was willing, Fafita. He was. Right? He was very willing. He was going and he after. knows the pressure that's going to come after him. You've still got a decent side there, man. Yeah. Firma was a good player. Phil Sammy. Fodawaker, Sammy, Palacia. Good enough to be better than they sort of the half up. They need a half. Need a half back. Yeah. Uh, Sunday, four PM. Warriors beat the Knights, twenty twelve. Mace, I thought this was a, a very physical game. Yeah. Felt like the ball was in play just in between the twenties for a long. I think period. this was the best game of the of the round. Yes, yeah, and then we'll get to the Parramatta one. As well. Yeah, I think yeah, that was yeah. pretty high quality because um, I think this was this was probably with the percentage and of the completions and how hard they were running the back fives. Fuck, it's good to watch the Warriors. It was a good battle. Yeah, like just the difference was right when. Just say when they kick it to Newcastle and you see their back five trying to come out of yardage and then you kick it to the Warriors mm. and you got fucking – take your pick. Dallin is coming off the back fence, right? And then you got RTS and then you got Montoya. They're big bodies, man, and they do not give a fuck. They, they test your will. The whole line's coming down there. Dallin takes it on the 30. When I saw that, I went – there's a big difference because I just watched the other guy come out of the yardage and he Tuala. made three meters and then this guy gets it on the 20 and he, he goes, my goal is to get to that 30. Yeah. Fucking who wins? I reckon, Bang. I reckon there was an advantage of maybe 10 meters for the first three carries of both teams yep. pretty much every set. And Tuala and, and Bradman Best were rolling up their sleeves too. Yep. They were getting into yep. it. They were working so hard just to get those first three carries before their middles got into it yep. because it was just in play, in play, and Warriors just always had an extra ten meters field yeah. possession. It felt like, and it did, and it was because they were catching it. As, as I said, like why, why the Warriors and all the t teams who win the um, the field completion, you know what I mean? Like yeah. they win the completion battle and the field position because they're catching it on their like thirty, getting to the forty on nearly their first hit up. Mm. Right by the time they finish that set, they're on their forty, nearly at thirty with the attacking kick. Yeah, and then like the Putting Knights were the just cage. constantly coming out. And then they'd have to rely on just say a, a massive run, which is hard against the Warriors. You know, the, the drums start beating, everyone wants to put a shot on you. You suck in your corner there. And they did that for majority of the game. For even the Knights to be in this game was a massive effort. Yes, I agree. Because I thought their kicking game. Best game of the so, so yeah, far for the Knights. Their, better than their win against the yeah, Storm. Their kicking game isn't as good. No, the halves are a the problem. The halves are really, they're a big problem. You know, like Gamble puts a little pop gun up and like Cogger, he's he's not a massive kicker. That's where they're going to miss Hastings, man. That's why mm. I keep thinking it's 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 Cogger, it's Hastings and Cogger. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Okay. That's that's the combination because have a look how, like when Penrith come on, I don't think Cogger's a seven. He doesn't organise enough. I reckon he's a runner. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, that's why a lot of people would say the opposite. That's why he was brought there to be that guy. But yeah. I'm, I'm the same I as you, mate. I like... People have got excited about Cogger because of the, the Mate, way he played the in the system. grand final. I was always like, hold up, up, hold up. up. Yeah, it's the same as we've been critical yeah. of O'Sullivan before with yeah. the Dolphins. Like, yeah, he was really good for Penrith. But outside of that, I haven't seen uh, a shitload of reps to say that he can be that guy long term. Now, I don't necessarily – I'm not sure. It's a, I said – we've said this from day one. Your One of your favourite sayings is iron sharpens iron mm. – We've, I've said anyway, well, and you've agreed with it, that it doesn't necessarily work in the halves because you want to have oh, the guy. Man. You don't want iron sharpens iron. No, 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 no. You want it middles, you want it outside backs, guys that compliment. do all the shit work. Compliment. Yes, compliment each someone other. needs to compliment yeah. Hastings. Someone needs to compliment Cogger and Gamble. Gamble. They just don't work. Nah. Right at the moment, I'm like – Gamble gets the worst ball in different in the worst situation. I don't know what you expect from the guy. Mm. You know, he gets a little kick. On, he, he's on the short side. They pass him, so he puts a little cage kick up. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's like where's he's not getting the lion's share of the ball. He's not running the ball. He gets a couple of little plays here and there, but he's like, fuck, I'm not getting the ball that I want. Mm. 
Because KP mean? loves it left. Yes. Bradman Best is over there. Greg Marzoun would only when he's fit. But Anari Tuala was playing a good game. So they wanted to play more to their left. By the time it comes over to the right, it's all, all like it's you know, yuck. Dane Gago and Frizz. They're just more toilers. And yeah. It's, 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 it's just like it's fri- the, the, the talk would be like, Frizz, I want early ball. I want early ball to go to the line and mm. someone out the back with yeah. Frizz. Because he's just a, he's their best player, Frizz. And you've got to give him the ball when he wants. Frizz was outstanding. He was outstanding again. His efforts, oh, mate, he's he's. He's one of the best forwards in the game, especially I think he's like 32, mm. still killing it. But they, they, they need to figure this shit out. I think personally get Hastings in there, running the thing like he does and just have Cogger on that left. Mm. Well, remember when he got dropped though, you were critical that he wasn't taking the ball to the line enough. He needs to fucking think- just take it on. Yeah, that's the, the last just, this, this is the fucking last conversation you're going to have with O'Brien. Mate, if you're not taking the ball on, you're probably going to be in reserve grade again mm. if you're not taking the line on. We need you to fucking get in there, dig like these other the good halves do. Copper lick. There's part of me that thinks they're He's still they're, the best, sorry. He's still the best option for him, Hastings, at still, seven. Okay. Just not I am not sure who you pick who your five eight. Him? I don't yeah. know who it is. Gamble will be good off 14. I reckon he's energy off the bench. You can't have him out of the sight. Energy off the bench. And if he comes on like a fucking Kurt man, just run, get the ruck pushing through. Mm. You know what I mean? Still got some big boys like the Saifidi boys and Thompson and all these guys and Elliot. Yeah. I think you know? Leo Thompson will be back this week. He missed the game with suspension. But their middles aren't doing a good enough job as well. No. Nah. It's they a need- tough one. Yeah, it is a tough one. Um, the Raiders blow a 18 0 lead against the Sharks at Cronulla. And the Cronulla uh, Sharks end up winning thirty six to twenty two. Um, Raiders, so they, they they're leading eighteen nil. They end up getting dusted thirty six to six, similar to the Dragons the week yeah. before, right? So is this does this highlight how close the competition is, or how important momentum is, or is it a combination mm. of both? Yeah, a combination of everything. If you want to keep dropping balls, and like just say the back end of that half, the first half, right? They were in complete control of that game. Mm. Then you start dropping balls in your own forty. Like to be it's, fair, they were dropping it early as well. Yeah, Both teams. It was a pretty rough game, wasn't it? At the yeah, start, it was another stinker yeah, to begin with, um, and then it got into a rhythm. It's a combination of everything, man. Yeah. And the middles, if you don't have fit, and they do have fit, resilient middles, Canberra. But like, fuck, they can only cop so much. And I just thought they would have dominated Cronut. Cronut was going to take so much fucking. Out of this game, they're four middles missing, mm. three middles, like three starters. That's the only reason why I backed Canberra. I was mm. thinking, you know, you, it's going to be a tough game, but you're thinking they're going to run over the run over them. It happened the opposite way. Sticky mentioned it in the post. He said he w- was disappointing because we're playing Newtown. Basically, yeah, he was playing Newtown with all the Reggies, like uh, you know, big, ru- bigger, bigger Tuku Hull Tapahu. Uh, big dude from Cronulla. Only 19 minutes, Ooh. but he had nine carries for 80 meters. <laughs> That was damaging. I bet, I bet Fitzy said at halftime, you just go lights out in the second half, yeah. set the standard, and it'll bring you off. Yeah. And that's exactly what he's he did. big boy, man. He's huge. He's got you a lot of – You just need to get more got, minutes in those big boys, eh? Yeah. Just leave just, him out That's there. all you got to do. I was watching um, I was watching Reserve Grade. I watched Power vs. Tigers yesterday. I was like, these middles have – I'm just particularly talking about the middles, right? They have everything, right? Body yeah. shape, everything like what first grade players – that's first grade coaches are looking for. It's the minutes that you're dishing out. Yeah. And it's the quality, quality. It's the quality of minutes. If you're not dominating the, the ruck in the middle in a reserve grade game and all the details that you've been taught at training, they're not going to put you up just because you do a mad offload here and there and you might run 150 metres. No one gives a shit about that. Mm. It's defence, defence, defence because look what happens. The fucking ball, the momentum switches over and then if you can't fucking do 18 tackles in a row – without being able to get back on your bike and get fucking one hit up and then kick chase. Effectively. Oh, mm. It is a marathon out there. You know, so I think, you know, most young kids who are out there, make sure if you want to be an NRL player, work on your fitness. Mm. It is 80% fitness. Yep. The 20% now- Q- IQ and fucking Everything being able else. to play the game. But it is, it is relentlessly out there. My biggest question mark on Sharks going into the year was Trindle at six long term, whether he's the he answer. Good. I've seen enough. Yeah. I think I think they're they're going to be thereabouts this year. Um, I'm, I don't like my bet at the moment for them not to make the top eight. They're looking pretty good. But I think with Adam Fennell Blake arriving next year, with some of the middles that they already got, they could be a genuine contender next genuine. year. Genuine. That Mulatalo man, he's unreal. Katoa, Jesse Raymond's one of the best Talakai defenders. Was good at Talakai row. was great. Uh, the young Ido kid, he did a job. I thought he was outstanding. Yeah, he the was good. Kid. Really good. Um, geez, he looks good. He looks like a, like a Val Holmes Timiko sort of hybrid. 
Mm. He's got all that. He's been around. He's been around for a minute. He does look a little bit Villa. Yeah, he's been. I think he's about 24, 25. He's Cook Islands too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Kevin Iroh's son. Yeah, yeah. Great Kevin Iroh. Yeah, I think they've got what it takes. I think they can really like what they're building right now. They would have been filthy on last year how they fell off a little bit, but what they're building now in these games where people thought, "Fuck yeah, Cameron's going to win." Cameron's not a bad side. Mm. You got three middles out. You got three starters out, and they still dish that up and get a. Team like Canberra, who are they're, they're made for that sort of those games at Shark Park. Yeah, but they didn't play like that. The all right, the middles were pass happy early. They were all trying to like even pups and tarps were doing these weird tip ons. Smithies weren't fucking horsebro looked different awful coming page, off the bench. Different pages, man. They try to play pr- pretty, mm. and I, I'm expecting a bounce back. I don't know who the Raiders are playing next week. I'll grab it in a little bit, but I'm expecting a bounce back and a physical encounter this week with, with whoever they got. Actually, I have a look just to make sure now. Uh, what's that round? That's the Bulldogs. Let's go to the Raiders. They are playing Parramatta. Oh. Yeah. They love playing. They're the sort of team. Mm. This is the perfect bounce back game for their middles. Yeah. I think they'll bounce back. <laughs> Speaking of the Eels, mate, they go down in a nail biter to the Tigers. A, a really entertaining game. Tigers really had to dig deep in this one. Uh, Gatho had a chance to steal it after the siren, but Ooh. the Tigers deserved it, mate. Has Benji already proven that you can play golf whilst also <laughs> coaching first grade? I think he listened to Dean Ritchie and just, you know, he, he rang Dean and he goes, how can I coach better? And Dean Ritchie would have given him all the tips. So <laughs> um, thanks, Dean Ritchie, for letting him know how to coach. Um, he just looks like he's having fun. Mm, he does. A little bit. Like I, I could see when Robbie, when, when Faffy and that was getting up when they were winning, you could see he, he, I think it's a coaching thing. You've got to hold have your shit to, together. Have to. Get up and fucking cheer, Benji. You know you got it in you. No, nah, it's like... Especially that. I know that. But you see some coaches like Sticky and they get up and show their emotions, belly and all that. I love all those sort of shit, man. Yeah. Anyway, I just think they look like they're playing with a real fucking... You know, know what it is? Just quickly before I cut you off. Yeah. It's like when you, you feel like you're on the winner with 100 yeah, to go yeah, at the yeah, races yeah. and someone tries <laughs> to early pro you and he's going, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, Let me see it. He's celebrating yeah. after. Yeah, he got up after yeah I know, I know. I love it. But I just think they look like they're having fun. That Galvin kid looks like he's got a lot of energy in that kid. They respect what he's doing. The forwards... Stefano was the best uh, prop in the in the first twenty minutes. How good's he looking, mate? He was. He went after. He mm. told you he'll go after Reg and he'll go after Paulo. It was a good battle. Reg went great at him. It was a great. As I'm saying, that's going to yeah. people when they're selecting the team. Yeah, they're going to look at games like that. Mm. This young kid, he wants it. Like he only played eight nine minutes of Origin last year. He's probably looking like he got slighted a little bit. All right, I want to prove myself to be an Origin player, and I've got to go at these two dogs because they're the guys that have got my position. Yep. Right at the moment. I love seeing that shit. Best. Because he went at it, man. You know, um, it was pretty even battle the whole way. I thought I thought Para when they got to that lead, I was like, oh, they could put the foot foot on throat sort of thing. And I'm like, they just they just missed a couple of things. That game was draining. They'll miss a Mitchie, but they'll miss a Mitchie to ice it out. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a couple of bad kicks here and there, like a couple of wrong decisions, but like they just kept fighting the Tigers. Yeah. They kept fighting and fighting and fighting. The Galvin thing sort of galvanized them a bit, didn't it? When he got in the name. Yeah. So you galvanized (laughs) it. Because when he went off, you can see when Appy goes, we fucking defended that 10 minutes for you. Yeah. He's 18. He said, uh, Appy said after the game, uh, like guys like uh, Samuel Afainu and uh, Young. Oh, he said this is a couple of times now. So Appy said it. And also Faletti tipped me up in the offseason. He goes, bro, watch out for Samuel Afainu. He's a guy who's. Really been vocal at come training. From Manly? Yeah, come from Manly. Only about yeah. four or five games at Manly. Apparently, like, he's super vocal. Yeah. And apparently he was, like, Appy said, behind the line when they were defending their line, he was pumping up the boys and, and letting them know it was, it was good effort. Yeah. Shit like that's in Shows a lot of steel, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's a confidence from a young kid because that's what you want to see from a young kid when you're Papa Lee, when you're Clem, when you're those guys who have been around for a minute. Bateman. I want to see the young kid. Like, that means something to him defending the line. Mm. And when, 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 when it, something happens when you get scored against, you're fucking filthy. And he's gone, I'm like, oh, I love that sort of shit. Mm. You know what I mean? When Galvin got fucking got 10 minutes, right? That I sort of laughed because it was totally different of when we're talking about Platt's like yeah. hip drop. It's still a hip drop, but I get it. But like if you're – what's his name? Tua Lungi. Yeah, you would have looked there and just went, get off. <laughs> Yeah. He just would have stood on your thing yeah. and said, hey, Galvin, get off and slap him on the head. He sort of relaxes after he passes yeah. the ball because he thinks it's over and then Galvin's like – Galvin just went – he, sort of, he just didn't know what he was doing. He's mm. like – because, you know, I get it. It's still that – whatever they're saying the hip drop is, yep. he did do it and that's why he's wearing two weeks. He's going to wear the two which weeks. Which sucks, but I'm like – yeah, that was totally different hip drops in my eyes. But they defended that 10 minutes and I think that could like steer them in the way that they want to be steered for this whole season. Just those little moments like that. They could, they could go on a little bit of a run now. Um, the stats back it up with what you're saying. They, were, they pretty much lost every big stat 
across mm. the board, whether it's possession, completion rate, yardage, everything. But this new Tigers team, and it's mm. credit to Benji, and and I and I guess it's I I, th- I feel like there's some hope. There's yeah. some hope with Benji. There's some hope with Galvin and Buller. You know what it's like, mates, when you're playing. Middles will do exactly if they feel like there's light at the end of the tunnel. If they work their ass off, you do anything for your. For you will your do, halves. yeah. But if you don't have hope or you don't feel like we've got the answers in the team, specifically in the halves, then you can quite easily cave. Teams can quite yeah. easily cave, and I feel like the Tigers have some hope. It's like the O line if they just give up sacks to the quarterback, yes. right? It's a middles Zach like middles are like middles are like that to our halves. Mm. We used to protect, like, just say for half would we'll do some good shit for it. You protect that half, right, mm. guys? Like, like Joey and JT and all these guys, you do anything, Lockie and that anything for these halves when you play with them. Yep. Shifty, you had the same sort of affinity for him. Braith, you protect your halves because mm. they do good shit. Mm. They win your games. You know, you know they're going to go after it. Yeah, they go after it. You know, the line games on the line. Look what happens. That young kid who got 10 in the minutes, 10 minutes in the bin, we defend our asses off for this little fucker, comes back on, ice the game for us. Yeah. Fuck. Class. And fucking feel sorry for Gutho because he would have ran about 20K and then he has to kick a win and goal. Feel sorry for you, Gutho, but fucking unlucky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, par- Paramista, uh, obviously that. Uh, change of rotation, I didn't like it. It's been working so well for them. They changed yeah. it. They started Hopgood and Offhand Go on the bench. Madison. And Madison and Junior Polo started the game the way that they've been playing off the bench and you can't do that. It's a different mindset. I know those two guys have experience, but – I don't mind Bra- the Paulo start. I just don't like the Madison start. Yeah, okay, because yeah. Hopgood keeps yeah. it a little yeah. bit more direct. More direct. Yeah. And Madison comes off with the offloads and he comes on, he just like – he'll change the ruck speed yeah. and he'll change with the offloads. He's really good defensively. Yeah. But not to start games. Yeah. Hopgood's he's, about that. He'll bang you. Yeah. He's made, he's made a point to – Hopgood goes after it defensively and, and then he starts mm. playing a little bit of footy at the back end of the halves. Yeah, not too sure why Brad changed it. I think maybe because of the way that the Sharks middles played against the Tigers last week and they tried they wanted to start. He, I guess he might have challenged his middles and um, the Tigers, credit to the Tigers because yeah. Clem and Stefano get the They held kick. up, but like you have a look at Paul. I mean, they get the W, they get the two points, but like I'm not sure if they won that battle in the middle. Because that, 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 there's, there was pretty even at the start. It was even. Then it they was end even. Up, the Parramatta, like they took like the last Polo, sort man. of 10 minutes, man. Then that's when they come in. Yeah. I like Vanua Polo. Yeah, he's got he's – got, he, he loves it. He loves him the and tough Stefano, shit. Him and Stefano, they could be it, man. That could be that last little missing piece. Look, and now they just got to sprinkle on a few vets in and around the team. Dang, it looks like they've got a, t- a decent team. They've got like something every week. They need, they need some outside backs. Jazzy Ollum's been good as well. But What about the – who's the – is it Tupo kid? Tupo. He's off to Dodgers. What about, yeah, what about him getting through the line with a double cramp? You see him double cramp, but it was two. It was two. It wasn't yeah. one. So yeah. he got through. He couldn't even move. It was a yeah. clean line break. I would have loved to have seen the first couple of minutes. Clean line break, just bang, bang. There Snipers. Was, there was about five or six of them that were yeah. dropping like flies at the back end of that game. It was a hot day yesterday oh, out there at Combank. Literally. I was out at Parramatta yesterday. It was hot and there was a few mm. dropping. Um, some good footy all around. Maybe a couple of sinkers mixed in there, but um, again, some really good footy. So uh, that's it, mate. We'll get to previewing the game on Thursday. Any quick turnaround? So I'll see you Thursday. Yep. All right.